All right. <clears throat> Good evening. Welcome to Fantastic Dimensions. This is session, what is it, session 34, I think, guys. Yeah, 34 of Rogues to Riches. Um, yet to be titled. Actually, I need to come up with a proper title. But we'll be picking up kind of where we left off. We'll go over some, some bookkeeping, and we'll get you basically to your new um, location of settlement as quickly as we can. Um, so when we left off, you had made a daring escape um, from the city of Amsterdam with your uh, recently uh, liberated employer, the magnificent Joop Van Ooms, who you broke out of the Rasp House, started a prison riot and a, and a jailbreak and a, and a whole situation in the middle of the city. Uh, and then you escaped the city via Joop Van Ooms' secret submarine that he had hidden in his basement of his home, um, where you rendezvoused at sea with your old friend, the uh, Italian merchant, Dom De Luigi, um, who had a, 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 a his his own personal, uh, what's his ship, his galleon, loaded up with uh, nice linens and fancy clothes to be shipped to London. Um, so there, it was the uh, the four of you, plus, of course, Yup Van Ooms and Gilles de Rice, who had joined Dom De Luigi's crew for the purposes of this particular voyage, at which point then he will uh, depart in London and stay on with uh, with Yup Van Ooms. Henry VIII stayed behind in London, or sorry, in Amsterdam, to uh, look after uh, various affairs that were that still needed resolution um, in Yup's absence and in your own absence. He is... Uh, you guys gave him the, I don't know, whatever the 17th century equivalent of power of attorney was so that he could um, look after your investments while you're away and make sure that whatever returns come back from those investments can make their way to you in England. Okay. Uh, which I'm sure he'll do by keeping in touch with you in London. And hopefully you will still maintain some communication with London and you over there as well. Because it's, it's always good to stay in touch. You never know. Especially a rich man like that, rich, powerful man. Who knows? He may have a, a future beneficial um, employment opportunity for you. So let's get the financial stuff out of the way. Um, you had, okay, monthly expenditures. Now, you guys had left in late June to um, <clears throat> go on your trip to Prague, basically, looking for chasing after... Uh, the um, Kinder des Mondes. So July and August, you hadn't paid rent, but in lieu of the fact that you have um, rescued your employer from prison, I'm sure he's going to take care of that for you. So you won't have to worry about those back months of rent, um, nor your stabling, food costs, garage, all that stuff. You don't have to pay any of it because you were, you were adventuring, so you wouldn't have the food costs or the garage costs or the stabling costs, etc. Um, and you look after your rent as well. So we can scrap all those expenditures. You do have, uh, let's see, so it would have been July, August, September, October, November. You had five more months worth of payment coming from Youp. He's going to just pay you off your contracts. So you no longer have to uh, concern yourselves with his employment. Um, so that's five months that he owes you. And he's also going to give you a bonus um, for the fact that, you know, he owes you his life. Um, so you're going to get 6,000 silver pieces each from Yup Van Ooms. Your contracts are uh, now void. He thanks you for your services during that time. And especially thanks you for that final service in which you saved him from the Rasp House. And, well, he was going to be hung in the morning, so it was even more dire than just the Rasp House. But you broke him from the Rasp House and saved him from facing the uh, the death penalty. Um, for monthly expenditures, I'm just going to take off the details. I'm going to leave those up there for the moment until, you know, just in case, until we figure out what your new living situation is going to be. All right. I'll keep food costs up there for now, just because that's not going to really change, just because you moved to England, I don't think. And you don't have seven horses anymore. Did you bring any horses? No, you didn't, right? No horses. No, you couldn't have, so you have no horses now. Unless you buy some 
in London. So I'll take that off for the moment. Um, I have a Sorry. question. No, put it back Why, up there. It, when he pays us off, are we just stuck holding all that money on a person? Or did he recommend us a, a bank? Or did he deposit it into a bank for us? Or how did that happen? Oh, right. You mean in, in England? Yes. Sir. Well, let me just double check something. But I don't think there are any banks in England at this time. Because the bank, the World Bank in Amsterdam was the first World Bank, the first bank. Let me see here. Um, first bank in England. Um, yeah. I don't know that's the Bank of England, but banking in the United Kingdom. Yep, won't be until 1694. So there are no banks. So nope, he will give you cash. He will be kind enough to pay you in gold. He has lots of it. So what is um, 6,000 divided by 50? 120. 120 gold pieces each. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay. So you, I don't have, I don't keep track of your personal finances aside, your, your personal accounts. I just keep track of your, your monthly things. So hopefully you do have all that information in your character sheets. So add your 6,000 silver piece of value to that. Now, from this point forward, of course, you are in England now. You're going to have to keep your wealth with you and you're going to have to find your own means of securing it because there are no banks, as we said. So. I have oh. some money to distribute among the group as well. Okay, Ooh. what would you like to take care of, Antonio? <clears throat> I have money left over from the uh, the mimics, the doppelgangers. So I have three gold for everybody, and two silver okay. for everybody, including me. Yep, let's bung the four of us. Because so I don't know if we're ever going to... I mean, I'm sure he's coming back, but at this point, he doesn't know that he's going to see any other... Um, the other Antonio ever again, so... Three gold and how many silver? 52. There's okay. some miscellaneous silver and copper left over, but I'm just going to delete all that. <clears throat> so it was lost along the way, because I don't feel like fractioning it off lower than silver, personally, right now. I got a lot of Karaz money. All right. How much did uh, how much did how many gold pieces did uh, the silver end up with from the from Yoop? Yeah, Yoop. Uh, it's 120 silver pieces was your final payment. Thank yeah, you. that, that 6,000 silver pieces converted to met, uh, gold pieces is 120 gold pieces. All right, so I got it's, I got a lot of stuff to do in London. Yeah, it's 50. So. It's 50 <laughs> silver to the gold. 50 silver, or yeah, 50 silver is one gold. Correct. That's why 120 gold pieces is 6,000 silver pieces. Okay. I got a, about 196 gold still coming from Amsterdam from the bank there that we didn't get. Oh, no, no. You do have it. Oh, okay. Oh. That's on the submarine, and it was transferred to the ship. Uh, All of your cash was... Remember when you were making plans for the jailbreak? Um, Henry VIII was taking care of your accounts and your affairs. Yeah, he went and closed your accounts, took all the money out, and put it on the submarine. Okay. And it's all in it's all gold. in gold. Got a lot of gold on me at the moment. Well, it's all in gold except for obviously whatever leftover bits are for purposes yeah. of. Yeah. Oh, it could so be an issue. It. So it's transferred into gold. Everything is then that we yep. had in the bank. The okay. only remaining, um, oh, the only remaining affairs you have in Amsterdam are your investments. Got it. Which okay. I still have on here. Wow. Vandergoot's have... very good wood. And Tony, you invested 10,000 silver pieces in that place. 3,000. Um, I have 23,000. And... That's the only That's the only one you have left is your investment in Vandergoot's very good wood. Because the textile shipping was all Rachel. She's gone. Oh, but you get her accounts. Sorry. You have 14,000 silver pieces invested in Vandergoot's Very Good Wood, and you have 7,000 silver pieces invested in um, a textile shipping um, from Amsterdam to London. Um, that So your Vandergoot's Very Good Wood is due to pay you out this November, and the 
textile shipping investment is due to pay out next April because Rachel's stuff was left to you in her will. Damn, Antonio. Fucking high roller over there. You got 21,000 silver pieces in investments in Amsterdam. <laughs> better, better get that will going for your next character. <laughs> right? Yeah, before, before, before Hobbs stabs you in the back to steal your spellbook or something. <laughs> now, we have a very lucrative deal regarding the spellbook. You said that textile one was also a risky? Uh, the textile one is stable. Stable. Okay. It's a stable one at 7,000. Vandergut's Very Good Wood is a risky investment uh, so. because it was opening in a new town. Do you have any money in the bank? Did Rachel have any money in the bank? Yes. Shit. I don't know. I thought you guys had worked that out already. Yeah, I don't remember. Mm. I'm going to say no, or it was lost or stolen or something. Okay, that's because I, I don't have any record of it. Maybe if um, if I hear from Crystal, if she, if, I, I may talk to her once in a while. Still, anyway, if I think to ask her how much money Rachel had in the bank when she died, I will. But for now, it's 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 a wall. All right. Hey, it okay. sounds stupid, but I need to know the formula for the silver to gold. I wasn't paying attention. That's okay. To um, so. 50 silver equals one gold. So if you want to convert okay. silver to gold, just uh, divide by 50. Okay, so if you want to convert gold to silver, 000. just multiply by 50. I got 23,000 in silver. Oh, I can so. tell you. I can do the math for you real quick okay. here. I don't, I don't have a. 23,000 divided by 50 is 400, 460. 460. Okay, thank you. That's 23,000 converted. Yeah, I don't know if you knew this, but you could just type it into your Google bar too. Type 23,000 divided by 50, and Google okay. will pop up a little calculator and show you the math or show you the uh, the, the result. Okay, I, I got short term memory. No, well, how many did you say that? How many did you say that was? 460 write, gold pieces. Trying to write it down at the same time. Okay, then mm -hmm. I got it now. Okay. No, it's all good, bud. No worries. It's, it's important, so I don't mind taking the time. This is what you guys adventure for. This is what you've been risking your lives for 34 sessions. Well, 30 sessions for Cole and um, what, 28 sessions for Antonio, 29 sessions, because I think Cole was only in one or two sessions before Antonio came in. So Hobbs, not so many, but Klaus, not as many either, but still, you know what I mean? This is your bread and butter, so. Now Hobbs has been here. Hobbs has been here in spirit since the beginning. Right. He's the <laughs> he's the little devil on everyone's shoulder. I apologize, <laughs> yeah. by the way, for the overlay. I tried to delete the blood again because I had to switch back to the four player overlay today. <clears throat> since Josh yeah, couldn't right. make the game, but I couldn't. It wouldn't let me delete the blood again. I don't know why. Weird. Whatever. It is what it is. I like the blood on your square. It looks like it's kind of running as you're talking and stuff. Nice. Yeah, um, so I'm sorry, your characters are kind of, especially Cole, you can barely see the poor guy under there. <laughs> That's all right. Um, so you have a week to spend in London. Um, and I will remind you of what the carousing rules state. Oh, wait. I saw something in the chat. Did you get your answer, Jose, for how much money? Um, Antonio gave you. It was three three gold and fifty two silver, Jose. Three gold and fifty two silver. Yeah. Uh, I'm good. I just saw Klaus. No, well, Klaus, Jose, type that in the chat. So that's how much he gave you for yeah. Division of whatever you guys got along the uh, the last trip. So. I'm gonna write my agenda of what I want to do in the chat. Okay, you can do that if you want. Um, I'm going to go, does everybody have the uh, link to the group document? Indeed. Campaign notes. Cool. I do. So I it would have been the, else. it would have been the morning of the 28th of August when you arrived in London, 1632. Um, huh. 
auspiciously, uh, the 28th of August was a full moon. So it was a full moon the night that you, your first night in England. <laughs> well, maybe your first night back in England for some of you. Um, so yeah, you have a week. You will have ask you for a little bit of assistance just in getting himself settled into London. He's got to quickly buy a new home and set up a whole new studio and everything. But uh, so so you know he might have little things, little errands or things for you to help him out with during the day just for this first week to get him set up. Um, but he would have paid you all your money, so you can carouse as you like. Um, now carousing rules. Um, once per session, you may spend 1d6 times 100 uh, silver pieces on ale and wenches, gaining experience points equal to the amount spent. Hmm, so that means 1 to 600 XP only? That doesn't seem like very much, does it? You have to pay all that silver for it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, you get 1 XP per silver piece spent. But I might change that to being once per day instead of once per session. I think I will. I'm going to change it right now to once per day. You may spend, per game day, you may spend 1d6 times 100 silver pieces. The, the document says gold pieces, but that's because it was a gold piece standard for whatever game this guy wrote this for, I think. And Lamentations is traditionally a silver piece standard. So, um if you roll a gold or experience point amount greater than your cash on hand, it means you end up owing money to various unsavory characters unless you can borrow the difference from a party member. In all cases, then you must make a saving throw versus poison to avoid overindulgence in your vices. Failure indicates a need to roll on the carousing table for to see what kind of effect you have. Um, you know, from from overindulging. So, uh, let's see here. Okay. Recommended ways that the chart can be modified. In a large city, the debauchery is much more efficient, doubling or perhaps even trebling the money and experience. Ah, yes, that's, that makes sense. Criminals who are members of the local guild may add, guild may add plus two to the, the roll, while their friends may add plus one. Being mobbed up gets you access to the best lotus powder etc or you might designate special rules for specific dens of iniquity yeah like a dwarves pub that's negative two on the save versus poison due to the potency of dwarven liquor or something for example but this is not a fantasy game obviously but this is just i'm reading from the document the original carousing document um yeah cool okay so i think i'll roll that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say you can spend it once per day and you know what i am going to say because this is london it is one of the uh, most central, biggest cities in Europe, uh, one of the most important cities in Europe. I am going to say you can roll up to 3d6 times 100 because um, it's an expensive town, too. So now, day one, does anybody want to do any carousing? Hobbs, I know, throwing up his hands. Well, I have. I I, have my, I put my agenda in the group, um, in the chat. I don't know if you saw it. I have uh, not yet. Agenda. Okay, first thing you want to do is transfer summon to your spellbook. How long does that take, and how much does that cost? Let's work uh, that out. Spellbook to spellbook, it costs 10 silver pieces, and then it, costs, it takes 1d3 days. It only takes 10 silver pieces? Yeah, from spellbook to spellbook, yeah. Cool. Not 10 silver pieces per level, or is it 10 silver pieces? Uh, I mean, it's a first level spell anyway, but I'm just curious. I'm pretty sure it's per day. Yeah. Ah, per day. That makes sense. I thought you were saying it just takes 10 silver pieces, period. Which I thought felt so. a little bit. Okay, 10 silver pieces per day, so roll a d3. Oh, you have to roll it. Oh, I have to roll it. Well, fair enough. It takes uh, you three days. All right. So I'll do a little um, thing here. Days spent in London. So for Hobbs, anyway, that's one, two, three days yeah. transcribing some. But of course, yeah, if, there is if. an issue with that because I'm not letting him touch the Malleus. So I need to transfer that into my new spell book before he can transfer it. Ah, or, there's a delay, or you, Hobbs. Or you could just, I'll just give you my spell book and you just transfer it straight onto there. Yeah, but don't you have to transfer it yourself? 
Well, actually, maybe no. Yeah, because you can just, even if my notation is different, you can just cast Read Magic on it. Yeah, as long as you cast Read Magic yeah. on the book. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Okay, yeah, then I will do it. Okay. Right. And it'll be his money. <laughs> yep. So there we go. I, so and 30 I'm not planning on carousing anyways. Okay. So I'll transfer it over. And while I do that, I want to see what other spells he has. Sure. Uh, what other spells are in your spell book? I have. Let's see. I have raid magic, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Magic missile. Okay. Unseen servant. One second. Okay. Detect magic. Book speak. Book speak. Yeah. Okay. And then for second level spells, I have levitate, web, and then for third level, I have speak with dead. That's all your spells? Yep. All right. Yeah, I well, definitely want uh, some of those. Cool. Now, you, you you can, you have seven days in London. You can transcribe, you know, you have another four right. days, basically, after the exactly. three days spent transcribing that one. Um, if you wish. All right, well, while he's doing that, I'll... I'll do some carousing, man, since it's going to take three days. Yeah. <laughs> so three days of carousing. Let's get that out of the way for you there. How, first day, roll your 3d6. Hobbs. Or do you want me to roll for you? I already rolled. Cool. <laughs> I got 13. 13. So you can spend 1,300 silver pieces on day one. Oof. <laughs> So subtract 1,300 silver pieces from your monet money. You can gain 1,300 experience points. Well, maybe before you do that, let's roll your poison save. Oh, buddy. 16. I think that's a pass, yeah? It's got to be a pass, yeah. 16. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fast. You don't overindulge on day one, but you do spend thirteen hundred silver pieces, and you gain thirteen hundred experience points. Does anyone else want to carouse on day one? Antonio is tucked away somewhere uh, in probably Yu Van Um's nice, spacious new London home, um, working away for three days. Does Cole or Klaus wish to carouse? Day one. No. No, no. I, I don't, but there's something that I wanted to do. Okay. Well, first, I wanted to talk to Cole and Antonio and let them know that, you know, since we're moving, do we know we're moving to this new place yet or not? Probably still working out the details as to where, but you know you're not going to, you don't want to stay in London because it's too expensive to try yeah. and build here and stuff like that. So you're going to be moving somewhere rural. Because uh, I wanted to talk to them about, since, you know, like, spending all this money on food and all this sort of stuff, I was thinking of taking all my money and see if uh, investing on, like, farm stuff, like, maybe trying to get, like, if we don't get a small house, try to get, like, a small barn, but look around town for, like, cheap um, crops and things like that that, you know, he can buy to get started. Oh, you mean, like, whenever you settle? Yeah. Right? Yeah. But he would want to ask them if they're cool with that, you know. He wanted to do what now? What was it? Uh, you said something about a barn, but I wasn't sure. Pretty, pretty much like, well, I mean, I imagine we're going to get a house. So if we get a house, I can plant stuff around the house. And then whenever we go on adventures, I can hire people to like, you know, plant the crops, take care of the crops and then sell them for me. And then eventually, you're thinking about starting a farm, like a small thing, until we get like a bigger thing. Pretty much with whatever money I have, get started, and then later on expand it. Okay, what do you think of that idea, Cole? I don't know. I don't want to be a farmer myself. That's for sure. I mean, you're talking about maybe buying like a little house and a farm out around the town or what, what i mean is like i'm not gonna farm i would get stuff to farm 
If I have to plant them myself, I plant them. But I know we're essentially be it, it basically be an investment. Yeah, an investment. Like I'll get people to sell their stuff, but pretty much we'll have food, and then eventually later we can turn that into we can get horses and animals, and that way we don't have to buy <coughs> you know like horses to get you know shit carried, and we, eventually I can get like a like a small farm and shit like that. Does he have experience being a farmer? Class? I don't know if I have to roll for that. Uh, well, I don't know what's your character's background. You, you, you know, think about your backstory. Think about what he's like. Does does he have a history with agriculture? Does he know anything about it? Well, I mean, I would imagine that like being a gypsy every once in a while, they you know they have to take care of the horses, so they probably have chickens and things like that. So sure, he'd have some. He. He'd have a little bit of knowledge, probably not nothing like running a farm, but uh, you can always, um, I mean, you're going to hire people to do it for you anyway, right? Yep. I did think about that, Ross. I'm trying to have other ideas. So, I don't know, let me think on it. All right. I have a question for you. Yeah. Okay. It would, um, our former boss, I know he has probably a residence that probably has some more safety than what we would. Would he hold on to my money for me until we're ready to go out of town and then I can pick up the- Oh, while the you're in London? Some. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna take like a hundred silver and that's all I'm gonna have on, my, on me. Okay. So just to let you know, okay. Cool, that's no problem. Um... Where did you get the 1D3 thing for transcribing the spells, Ronnie? Um, ah. You're like in the magic nope. activity I, I found it here. I found it on my bookmark. <laughs> <laughs> transcribing a spell from spell book to spell book. Spell level times 1D3 dates. Yep. Okay. I don't see it in the actual rule book, but it's probably in there somewhere. It's probably... Yeah, but it's, it's on the bookmark. I've got my official Lamentations of Flame Princess bookmarks that I bought ages ago from um, Page 82. Noble Knight, I think. Oh, yeah, I got those the same time I bought my Lamentations of the Flame Princess dice set. But anyway. Jealous. <laughs> um, yeah, I lost one of my bookmarks. I'm so pissed. I don't know what book it's in. It's not in any of my Lamentations books, though, because I've looked in all of them. So I have no idea where it's gone. It was my favorite one, too. It was the one with Alice on it. Oh, well. Anyway. So. Bible. What'd you say? In the Check Bible? Check your Bible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have one of those, I'm afraid. And my wife's Catholic, so she doesn't have one either. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, aside from that, though, did anybody else want to do any carousing day one? Going once, going twice. Okay, day two. Hobbs, you're going to carouse again? No, today I'm going to be shopping around for some sacrifice, sacrifice victims. Right. You want to buy some orphans. Yeah. How does one buy orphans? Uh, I'm assuming you make a sizable donation to some orphanage. Right. And you adopt the orphans, quote, unquote. Mm -hmm. How much of a donation? And I, I will also be renting a out-of-the-way building for myself. Preferably with the basement. Be you doing what? Sorry. Uh, I want to. I want to rent like a house with a basement in it. Oh, you want to rent a house? Yeah. Mm hmm. I, I got. I got dark wizard things to do in the basement. Okay. And how many um, square feet 
are we talking about? Uh, a lot. Well, I don't know. I need to know how many squares. Each 10-foot square has a certain cost per month. So, so are you talking squares? So, like, talking like 30 by 20 feet? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, one, two, three, one, two. Yeah, yeah something like that. It would be 30, 20, 20. Yeah, you know what I mean. Okay, yeah. and a basement. How much space in the uh, basement? Yeah, yeah, definitely. The same space? Uh, it could be a little smaller. Okay, so we'll go for three squares. So like maybe Let's 20 four, feet. Four. By, hmm? four squares. Four squares, okay. Yeah. So nine squares total. Yeah. You want to rent this place. It is going to cost you, I'll tell you in a second. Let me pull up my calculator again, which is really at the moment just Google. Uh, boom, 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 boom. 270 silver pieces to rent it for a month. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'll be paying that. So that cost you to mark off another 270 silver pieces. All right, and then I would like to visit. I'll buy some nice looking clothes and then I will go to the orphanage. Are oh, you going to buy some nice clothes, you said? Yeah. Nice clothes, like fancy clothes. Fancy clothes. Um, clothing extravagant. Oh, uh, hella cost you... fancy clothes. Hella fancy? Hella fancy. 50 silver pieces for clothes. Done. Now you got some hella fancy extravagant clothing. Probably like, right. like nice fancy silks and everything, you know? And I want to go swag walk over to that orphanage. Okay. And so I think this, this is a role play encounter for sure. <laughs> okay. So the woman running the orphanage, um, I don't know what the term would be. What's the uh, Anglican church uh, equivalent of a probably be called nun. a matron. Yeah, sure. The matron will, uh, will meet with you as requested. I'll tip my hat when I see her. Mr. Hobbs, is it? Yes, madam. I am. I'll take your hand. You may call me Matron <laughs> Duncaster. Duncaster. I'll, I'll try and kiss her hand, see what, see what she does. Uh, roll your charisma. What's your charisma? God, terrible, I think. <laughs> Actually, I'll roll it for you. Just tell me what your charisma oh, is. Yeah. It's average, 11. She uh, recoils your hand and snarls like... <laughs> kind of snarls a little bit, like raises her lip at one corner a little bit at you. Sneers, that's the word I'm looking for. Sneers at you. Oh, forgive me, madam. Forgive me. I do not know my manners. I am a woman of God, Mr. Hobbs. Indeed. Well, I have I'm never here. known the kiss of a man, and I certainly wouldn't want you to be the first. Indeed, indeed. Well, I'm here to lift up children out of, out of poverty i yeah. see start up a start up a school for young children and you wish to adopt these children yes yes madam okay and why uh why should i consider you as a as a suitable adopter <clears throat> What well, makes you fit for parenting a child? Well, the children will be very well taken care of under my supervision. They will prosper. They will be fed daily, sometimes twice a day. They will be given the greatest education money can buy. And yeah. So that's your, your uh, argument is that you're rich very much so. And that makes you a suitable parent? Very much so. What church do you attend, Mr. Hobbs? Uh, the Church of Later Day Saints. <laughs> I've never heard of it. Sounds Catholic. 
She sneers even larger, even worse this time. I'll pull, she, out, I'll pull out my handkerchief and I'll say, oh, Catholic, never. Never in my life. What's the denomination then? Uh, shit, I don't know. Ang- Are you Anglican, Anglican Presbyterian? Anglican. I am Anglican. <laughs> hey, she believes that one. Very well. So the children will be raised in a godly home, I trust. Of course. Surely you don't want to discuss business out in the cold, though. No, this is inside. You're you're oh, sitting. Oh, we're in, inside. You're, you're, inside. In, you're okay. inside her little office. I apologize. I should have explained that. Yeah, okay. imagine this happening in in her little office inside the the building that suits as an orphanage. Um, any right. preference, a boy or a girl, age? Oh, I would only. I would like to take the brightest and most desperate of your children home. The the ones who have seen the worst life has to offer. I see. How many children are you talking about here? Two? Three? Four children. Four children. Four! Well. Very well, Mr. Hobbs. We have four children. Three boys and a girl. Uh, The girl is nine the boys are eight, six, and five. Perfect, madam. Perfect. Adoption fees will require you to make a donation to the orphanage. She pulls a piece of paper. She's writing things out with a, a big quill ink fountain, you know, she's, uh, writing away. Here we go. It's going to cost you... Forty silver pieces. Right, I'll put a gold piece on the on the table for your time, madam. Thank you, Mr. Hobbs. I will make the arrangements, and you can pick them up. Uh, I'm assuming you're doing this first thing in the morning, right? This is the first bit of business in the day. You may pick them up uh, after lunch. Say uh, to, uh, the second hour. In the afternoon. Very well. Sounds good. And I'll take my leave and then I'll come back as, at the designated time. All right. Yep. And you get four uh, <laughs> mangy orphans, basically. Uh, you know, <laughs> they're destitute. They're practically wearing rags. I mean, you know, they're, they're clean rags, but they're not much better than rags. Poor clothes. All right. Um, I'll spend the rest of my day uh, feeding them, putting, getting them better clothes, you know, giving them the best day they could possibly have. Okay, you get them some better clothes. Yeah. Okay, and you're going to feed them? Going to give them a good yeah. meal? Yeah, definitely. Um, how good? Like, really good? Oh, really good. Okay. All right. Anything else? That's it for Food, now. Clothes. That could be another twenty-four silver pieces. <clears throat> and uh, you are a terrible, terrible man, Ronnie Ortiz. <laughs> All right. Anybody else got any other business? To take care of it in the second day. Antonio would still be uh, quite busy transcribing summon into Master Hobbs' spell book. Need. I'm also making a list of things that I want to purchase for myself. Cool. Yeah, no worries. I see somebody's typing books into the chat. I'm not, I don't have time to read all that. So if it's for me. I'll, uh, Klaus will stop at the church and just take a look around and then like pray. Okay, cool. Klaus is going to pray. What What church? Um, He would just, I mean, is there more than one? You're in London, man. You've got Anglican churches. You've got Presbyterian churches. <clears throat> pardon me. Um, you may be able to find one Catholic church. I'll go to that one. Because t- the, the king's wife, the queen, I guess, if you will, the, the queen consort is is Catholic. So 
um, Catholics are still a little bit, yeah. uh, a okay, little bit tolerated. Like, they're they're more secretly Catholic persecuted world. here. Okay. Cool. All right. And what about Cole? Anything? Any matters to take care of on the second day, or we go to day three, or night two, maybe, depending on how fast uh, Hobbs works. All right, nothing from Rob. So we'll move on. Um, do you do anything else that night, Hobbs, or are you wait until the next day? Uh, is the house that I rented? It's already furnished, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I'll and introduce... it doesn't have. I mean, at that size, it has like one bedroom. Right. Okay. So I will introduce the children to their new home, mm -hmm. and then I will make them sleep in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. They get to sleep in the... This is their home now. This is their forever home. Right. Yeah, okay. So their they forever will... <laughs> home for their long and, uh, and long bountiful sleep. lives. Oh, goodness gracious. I'm glad I don't know any of this. <laughs> oh, yeah. There'd be a fight. I mean, uh... I'm kind of sorry that I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So I'll introduce them to their forever home, and then I will go off to one of the alchemical stores to buy materials for the circles, the summon circles. Oh, yeah. What are you buying? Uh, What's, I got to put on my Resi 4 merchant list. What are you buying? What are you buying? <laughs> Let's see. What do I need? Yeah, I'm just going to be buying like a bunch of incense and salts and Rare flowers, all kinds of weird shit. Okay. So I will spend five thousand or five thousand silver pieces on materials. All right. Knock it off of your. You've spent almost all the money that you gave you. <laughs> five thousand silver pieces. Got it. All right. And that. Yep. Yeah, that'll be my night. Cool. Then we can move on to day three. Um, yeah, this is the day that I finish, but still going to take the day. Yeah, yeah. Your last day of transcribing summon. Indeed. Into his book. Yep. So I think really comes back to you, Ronnie. What's uh, what's day three look like for Hobbs? Actually, I'll, I'll spend four thousand silver. Five thousand is a little much. <laughs> four thousand, okay. No problem. Yeah, and then um, yeah, I'll make sure the children are well fed, and then I'll buy them like a toy or something to keep them entertained. Okay, a uh, toy, yeah. Yeah. Sure. How many toys? Just one toy for the yeah. four of them to share. Uh, two toys. Two toys. Yeah, okay, that cost. Uh... Make it even. Are you gonna buy a nice toy or a cheap toy? Uh, nice toy, I guess. All right, it'll cost you two silver pieces, you cheap bastard. Hey, I, I bought them two toys. That's I know. That's already bought. I'm cheap. <laughs> They're wearing the finest clothes they'll ever have their entire life. All right, and then the third night, I will prepare the circle in the basement. And right. Think... While they're playing with the toy upstairs, yep. you're uh, downstairs preparing a summon circle. Nice. Yeah, to make it sound so dark. Uh, that's day three. <laughs> I don't know if Rob's back yet. Um, I want to check something here. Hold on a second. When you cast a spell from a scroll, it disappears from the scroll, doesn't it? Yes. Okay. So never mind about that. It has to go in the book. Okay. Yeah, scroll is like a single use item. Or you can you can cast it, or you can transcribe it. Right. Uh, if you transcribe it, does it disappear? I don't think it disappears from the scroll from trip just by transcription. Transcribing from a school. Oh, it does. Yeah, it does remove yeah. the spell from the school as well. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, couldn't remember. It does, though. Yep. Yeah, because it sucks the magic energy out of it or something like that. Okay. Yep, still doing that. Okay. Um, so day four will arrive. 
Uh, on day four, you can start transcribing another spell if you want. Uh, I could, but he needs his book. Does he? Which I will yeah. be back so, for first thing in the morning. Right. Oh. So you have a good night's rest, come over. Are you going to just study the spell right there and then leave the book? Or are you going to take your book with you? Uh, well, do you want to transcribe them now, or do you want to? I'd like to get at least. I want to try to get at least one of them transcribed. Yeah. You could try, but it takes time. It does take time, but we're Random here for about a week. <laughs> exactly. But it's if it's three days, and I start today, then I can get it done before we need to leave. Mm -hmm. The spell that I want the most, because it's first level, luckily. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's fine. I'll, I'll just prepare so you something. study it, and then yeah, yeah. Whoa. Sorry, my dog is acting up. I know, that's my dog. <laughs> Sorry, America doesn't, America doesn't have a dog. Nope. Okay, so the next one you want to start transcribing is Unseen Servant, I think was the Yes, spell, right? yep. exactly. So that's that is going to take useful. two days. Excellent. 20 silver. Cool beans. I'll okay. mark that off. I will, so, I will shake uh, Antonio's hand, and I will wish him best luck in case he doesn't see me again. Mm. Adventures. Mm, indeed. I fear what you're about to do, but I have done so myself and came out unscathed. But so, beware, we'll they see. are treacherous, treacherous beings, and they could burn you to a cinder with as much as a thought. We will see, my friend. We will see. All right. If I see you not again, trust that your book is in good hands, and I wink at him. <laughs> I'll chuckle and then I'll walk out the door. And I <laughs> shudder. <giddy. laughs> I look forward but to seeing I what day four for Hobbs looks like. <laughs> yeah. I shudder at what he's about to do, but I'm also kind of excited because it is magic and it is uh, something that I've done and really didn't get to capitalize on as much as I had hoped. <laughs> I'll have to do it again sometime. You have the means. All right. <clears throat> So, tell me what you do next, Hubs. Uh, when did you say the full moon was? Um, four days ago. No, okay. <laughs> the day you arrived. Got it. All right, then I will wait for, I'll feed the kids one final good meal. Okay. And then once midnight, or I'll wait till three in the morning. The witching That's hour. good because I don't think you fed them anything yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you just gave them toys to play with and left them alone. Right. Okay, well, another good meal. So good, that's they another good four the silver. Day. That's another four okay. silver. Four silver. Okay, they're poor right. orphans. They're used to not necessarily eating every single day. Yep. Yep. Okay. Cool. And then I'll wait till 3 a.m. in the morning. Oh, mm -hmm. actually, before that, I'll go out and buy a lot of rope. A lot of rope? How yeah. much rope do you want? Uh, 50, four 50 foot ropes. Four 50 foot ropes in the city of London. Four 50 foot ropes will cost you 12 silver pieces. Sure thing. And I'll buy some sacks. Four sacks. Oh, God, you bastard. <laughs> Out of everything. That's uh, another two silver. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is disturbing. <laughs> but we'll, I want to see what you saw <laughs> so bad. <laughs> okay. Four sacks, four ropes, four kids. Huh. How winter? What a and coincidence. I'll, and, then I, <laughs> and then I'll buy a book from the store. A book? It's like a, like a storybook. Oh, a storybook. Yeah. A storybook um, will cost you 10 silver pieces. Got it. Got it. Can't remember the last time a character bought a storybook. I don't think ever in any of my games. First for everything. <laughs> Can't remember the last time anybody bought four orphans in my game. Oh, yeah. Never. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so I will go back home. I will gather the kids. We'll have dinner. We'll sit by the fireplace and I'll read them, read them from the storybook. Uh, what, what kind of stories is are in the book? Um, well, you tell me. What, uh, what, what kind of story book did you look for? 
the 1630s. Uh, I mean, William Shakespeare is all the rage. His stuff's being published now, but... Uh, I don't um, think they'd appreciate Shakespeare. No, maybe not. Mm. Do you buy them a, a horror story or a book of... No, no. I'll, I'll buy them like a fairy tale with a dark ending. Okay, cool. Something something kind of akin to like a Grimm's fairy tales. I don't remember when yeah, those were Yeah, Grimm's fairy tale. Something all like right, that. So I'll, I'll read, them, read them from the book. And cool. then... Once it gets dark and they start getting sleepy. Yeah. They all go to pile up in your one single bed that they all share. Yep, yep. And then I'll wait till 3 a.m. And then after that, I'll hurry them into the basement while they're groggy. Okay. Kind of wake them up in their sleep and come, come quick, children, quick. What's going on? Uh, What is it, Daddy? (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Nothing, children. This is something I'd like to show you in the basement. Oh, is it a surprise? Oh, yes. I bet it's more toys. I never actually learned these kids' names. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to? Uh, no. <laughs> Thomas, Harold. Oh, God. Uh, Robert and Fiona. All right. So... So in the basement, there's a large circle made of various materials and candles lit very around the room. Oh. And then I'll have them, I'll line them up around the circle, standing up. And then I will begin tying them down, tying them, tying them with rope. What are you doing, Daddy? Why, what, what's the rope for? Oh, we're just playing a game, Ring Around the Rosie. Ring Around the Rosie? I don't know that game. Oh, well, you'll learn very soon. And okay. I'll tie them up one by one. Mm-hmm. And then, are they all tied up? Yeah. All right. Yeah, they trust you. You've been feeding the them, buying them head. toys, reading them stories. It's been the best two days of their life. All right. I will put a sack over their head. Oh, I can't wait to see the surprise. <laughs> God, this is a surprisingly dark. <laughs> All right, and then I will be, once all the sacks are over their head, I will begin casting summon. And then once the end of the spell is over, I'll slit each child's throat and let the pour, let the blood pour into the circle. So you are <clears throat> casting a spell to rip a hole in the fabric of space and time and pull out energy from within that, uh, within that rift, that hole. Now, um, we need to talk about the details of your spell. So, uh, what is the intended power? Essentially, uh, uh, in terms of hit dice. You can well, you go can up to maximum. two times your caster level, which you're yeah, level so six, right? So 12 is your I'm max. Five. Oh, five, 10 is your max. Yeah, so I will go 10. So you're gonna go for 10, level 10. Okay, yeah. then level 10. Okay. <clears throat> um, next step uh, is you must make a saving throw versus magic. All right. Now, you get modifiers, right, for all your sacrifice stuff, but... Um, I have a plus four modifier? for sacrifices, and then I have... Let's see. Plus... Where's the bit about bonuses? I'm um, looking for it here. Let's see, it's in the summon spell itself. Talk about treasure circles and sacrifices. Here we go. So each full two hit dice of sacrifices gives you a plus one. So you have a plus two for sacrifices. That's and that's only for domination roll. Um, or one hit die for one plus one bonus at sacrifice. Same rate. Oh, it's the same rate as the caster. Sorry. So it's actually it is one hit die for one plus one. You're right. Yeah, so, so it's plus four. So it's plus four, but that's for the domination roll. Now, um, that doesn't apply to this set saving throw. This is not the domination roll. Uh, what about yeah, the so circle wrote, bonuses? The circle bonus. Plus one for each um, 500 spent. And that's, again, only for the domination roll. Okay, good to yeah. know. And you're gonna have, so you're going to have plus 12 to domination. Then I will... Use seven points of my bless spell for this saving throw. 
You cannot oh, use it save. for you can't use it for oh right. you can use it for saving throw though. You can use it for Wait, saving throws. But you can't use it for uh, it doesn't say anything against not using it for magic. I don't know where that came from. Does it not? No. Ha <laughs> that sounds like something Hobbes would say. <laughs> uh it's the spell's bless. I just want to double check. I think you cannot use it for but let's double check. Yeah, I'll, I'll save throw, skill that. checks, surprise checks. Anything except damage rolls. No rolls related to damage or anything concerning use of magic can be modified. Oh, so no, you can't it. use it for this. Because right. this is related to your spell that you're right, casting. Save magic. Nice try, Hobbs. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Just a straight up d20 roll. Alright. Um... Well, don't worry. This the spell is gonna work. This is just gonna. No, I know, no, I know. Failing it just means that a more powerful creature than anticipated comes through. All right, twelve. So I failed the magic save. Okay, you failed the, that save. That's good to know. Creatures' form and powers will be randomly determined in the following tables, with different results altering the creature's basic stats. So, let's write down base stats. AC twelve. Uh. Attacks. Are oh, you doing this the old school way? <laughs> One. What? Yeah. I think you'd... Yeah. Because there's odd things that show up in that uh, oh, that yeah, online yeah. thing that don't include that aren't included in this book, like abilities and such. One d six damage. Magic. Move one twenty ground at the moment. That can all change. And a morale of ten. That's the base stats. Yeah, the one I summit had a move uh, of two hundred and ten. Oh, and I forgot to. Level, level I would right? have that. <laughs> yeah, it was that, that thing was awesome. It was so wicked. <laughs> Unfortunately, we only got to see it for you know half a scene. Roll a d twenty for me, nasty. there, Ronnie. Right. I'm kind of scared. I got a fifteen. A fifteen. Roll a d ten, yeah. please. Seven. Ooh. So we have pure energy form and it is immune to normal attacks immune to normal attacks sorry i know this is a bit slow but it's kind of cool to see how the spell works yeah, and <laughs> it's also uh does 1d8 damage now for touch 1d8 touch because it is pure, made of pure energy itself. Okay, very cool. Now, each basic form that is not from the abstract forms will have a number of additional features. The base hit die of the creature is used to determine. Um, okay, cool. So it has, all right, roll the indicated die type. This is the base number, roll the die again. If the new roll is less than the base number, then roll an appendage on the following table. Okay, so roll a d10 for me, please, Ronnie. Six. Six. Roll again, please. Six. Okay, you don't get an appendage. Step four. Determine the number of powers that it can use. Use the base hit die of the creature uh, to determine which die. So it gets another 1d10. Roll the indicated die type. Roll d10, please. Four. OK, and now roll again. Three. Three. If the initial saving throw was failed, a new power is gained on a roll less than or equal to the base number. So you rolled a three. Okay. Um, then, okay, cool. So you rolled a three on the first number. So that's gonna get one power straight off the bat. We are looking at a D100, please. And 92. 92, vulnerable to cold iron. Hmm. But it's immune to normal attacks. What does this say? Vulnerable <laughs> to cold iron. I guess cold iron isn't necessarily normal. Yeah. Um, 
so it takes plus one damage per die. In this case, it's immune to the base normal attack, so it's just one point of damage <laughs> for getting hit with a um, <laughs> with a piece of cold iron, something like that. Okay, now roll another d10 for me. Nine. Okay, roll another d100, please. Sixty-one. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Roll again and keep adding special powers until a new roll greater than or equal to the previous roll is made. I apologize. No, there's no no additional powers. That's the only power. Sorry. I, I, I misread that. I was thinking you had to roll higher, but no. Oh, okay. That's fine. Okay, so the nine ended that. So it's got the one power, which is its vulnerability to... Uh, Iron. It has a touch attack for 1d8 damage so far. Step 5 is the domination roll. So it's hit dice stay at what you chose, right? There's no way to change the hit dice? Uh, unless like I screw something up in the summoning. I, I'm pretty sure it's just a base hit dice. Whatever. There's probably some of these effects that would have given the extra hit dice. Yeah, yeah probably something yeah. like that. That and if he uh, if the domination roll goes spectacularly bad for him, it's yeah. going to get a lot of hit dice. Ah, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, domination roll is going to require two one d twenty rolls, one for the caster and one for the summoned entity. So you get to modify by your level, and and plus that. So your level is five, right? So you get a total yeah. of plus 17 to this roll. Nice. The creature's hit die is added to its roll, and it receives plus one for every power it has. OK, so it gets plus 11. Roll d20. 12. So you got a 12 plus 17? Yep. OK. Domination results. If the magic user wins, the margin of victory determines how many d10s to, to roll determine how many rounds a creature will be under the caster. So your total result is 29, right? Yeah. My total result is 13. So 29 minus 13 is 16. The caster must concentrate on controlling the creature for this period of time. You'll have 16 rounds. If your concentration is broken by being damaged, casting a spell, etc., then there must be another determination rule to to another domination roll to determine if the creature remains under control. Okay. If you win by a great margin, equal to or greater than 5 plus the creature's hit dice plus the number of its powers. 5 plus 10 is 15 plus 1, 16. You did. Yep. You, in fact, um, yeah, equal to or greater. Yep. The caster can demand a longer service from the creature without needing to consciously direct it. The details of this service must be communicated in a clear and succinct manner. So you're not restricted to that 16 rounds, but you have to make a detailed, communicate a detailed service to the creature. Uh, if it's a margin of 19 or more, it wasn't, then it would have been bound permanently in the rogue, but it wasn't, okay. And I think that's it. You won by a great margin, but you did not permanently bind it. Um, okay, yeah. I think that's everything, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's the spell. Cool. OK, so you're summoning a, an entity of pure energy. What's its name? Uh, I, I'll call it Beazel, Beazelbub. Beazelbub. But... <laughs> so the, <laughs> the, uh, en the demon, whatever you would call it, that you have creatively named Beelzebub, um <laughs> appears in a form of pure energy what would that look like i guess it would be hard to um to describe and it'd be almost it could be kind of hard to see like it's hard to believe that you're seeing it in a sense if that makes any sense yeah um almost like a like a distortion like a but like a severe distortion you know like not like not like a, a subtle distortion like a predator cloaking device distortion but more like a like a severe distortion like something's just wrong um appears there it's large too in your summon circle how did you sacrifice the children during the spell uh, they were standing up and then i slit their throat and the blood poured into the circle around it 
Oh, so you pull the sack up and cut their throats? Yeah. Okay. So I think, oh, we get to see surprise out. And then they bleed out. Okay. You have Beelzebub, this being of uh, pure energy before you. It's offensive and painful to behold. I'll be, I'll be cackling and laughing as like the energy is like flapping my coat into the wind, and I'll have my hands in the air. And it will say, "What do you desire, master?" And I'll bring my one of my, I'll bring my left hand into a fist, and I'll say, "Become my familiar for life, and serve me." I cannot choose the task, and it shall be done. Hmm. You can't bind it permanently. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, though, you said wait for the rest of your life. Yeah. Repeat what you said one more time. Uh, Become my familiar, serve me for life. What kind of service? Teach me the ways of magic. Teach me the ways of magic. Okay. Very well. It shall be done. You now have a large, painful to look at uh, monstrosity of a demon in your basement that is bound to you <laughs> for life and will teach you about magic or teach you magic. Um, yeah, I don't know how you plan to get out of the basement, but uh, then again, you got you got four dead orphan bodies to get out of the basement as well. Sure. But uh, yeah, nice. okay, cool. Our uh, first business i uh, order the familiar to eat the bodies of the children and it envelops them and just like it kind of essentially turns them into like there's a really disgusting smell of like burning flesh and and hair and such um and it just turns them completely into like some kind of protoplasmic ghoul uh goo uh, which it then absorbs into itself and turns into energy nice Leaving only the right, smell. I'll go, up, I'll go upstairs, sit down in my chair by the fireplace, close the storybook, and go to sleep. <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> that was day what? That was day six, right? Uh, I think it was day four. No, no, that was, that day, was day four. four. Sorry, day four. Yeah. yeah, so day five. The sun rises. Um... What do you do? I guess, Merrick, you're going to try to learn. Oh, yeah, we already rolled that, right? Yep. So yep, you'll still have finishing that, that you'll have done by day six. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, Cole, Klaus, anything you guys want to take care of? Days four or five? We're still in London. I was. Yeah, yeah. You're going yeah. to be in London for you saw four days chat, still. But... No, I didn't. I had company unexpected that I had to talk to. All so right. Okay, anyway, uh, we're still in London, so I guess he'd just be enjoying himself a little bit. Not rowdy, but just having a beer, having a good okay. dinner, that kind of thing. Yeah. Resting up. Cool. Maybe seeing if anybody, if he's been in London before, if they have contact with some of the people from the group that he was with, you know, the. Yeah, you're, uh, you're, you're an Englishman, right? You're in your hometown. So yeah. I'm sure you could catch up with somebody. I'm sure you know somebody in London. Sure. Okay. All right. Anything anybody uh, else wants to do uh, on day five? Yeah, go ahead. I I actually wanted to search around and see if I can find like a weird shop, like a place where they keep like odd like trinkets and books and things like that. Sure, there are plenty of places. I'm sure you find could find weird shit. What, what are you looking for? Something in particular or? I want to see if I can find any special books. 
any special books? What kind of books? Are, um, what do you what magic did you have in mind? Books. Hmm? Uh, uh, magic books. Oh, magic books? No. No, you won't find any magic books for sale in a shop in this world. Oh, yeah, I try to just figure maybe you find something weird in one of those places because a lot of people don't know that you know the shit really exists. Yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, let's see. No, you don't find anything. You you check out. You spend the entire day going to all kinds of different little shops, uh, all kinds of weird little places, and you don't by by no means do you exhaust all the weird little doodad shops around um, London at all. But you spend the day searching and find nothing on the on the first day. Uh, nothing of any kind of magical sort, anyway. Nothing that strikes you as being interesting in that sense. Um, let's see. What about uh, what about you, Hobbs? What do you do day five? You wake up your first. Uh, I will first wake up in the uh, in your new life in a sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll go out and I want to buy like a big jar or pot with a lid on it like a wood stopper or something. Mm -hmm. Can I get one of those? Yeah, how big are you talking? Mm, probably like four feet tall. Okay. Four feet wide. Yeah. yeah. Something I could like sling over my back. Okay, it'd be heavy, be big, you know, I'll, I'll be yeah. awkward more than, I mean, it'd be heavy too. Yeah, actually a clay pot yeah. that size. Yeah. But yeah, you can find they something like that. This. Mm -hmm. right, maybe a little bit smaller. Like Let me three see feet. how much that would cost you. Three feet by two feet. Okay. Um, sure. Okay. That will cost you um, 10 silver pieces. All right. Done. Then I'll okay. go back to my house. Mm -hmm. Go down to the basement. Sure. I will look the energy at... form is there. Master, you have been gone for long. Yes, I have business to attend to. Now get in the jar. I'll order it into the jar. It or the pot. starts to try to pour itself into the jar. Gets maybe about half of itself into the jar. <laughs> maybe. And the jar explodes into shards. I order you to become smaller. I cannot. My form is pure energy. It cannot be destroyed. How big is this thing? Uh, about twice the size of a man. Maybe about 10 <laughs> feet tall and about four feet wide at the shoulders. Well, if it had shoulders, it doesn't really have shoulders. But imagine, you know, like... All right. Um, become the form of a horse. Okay. It shapes itself into a shape like a horse. Um, it's still made up of the distorted energy... Okay, I'm going to take it to measurements. Okay. <laughs> so, no, I'm going to go back out. <laughs> okay. Look for a, a horse armor. Okay. Looking for horse armor? Okay. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Well, you and are so in London, fortunately, so you probably find something. Um. Yeah, he does barding. What kind are you looking for? Uh, lots of lots of leather. Leather. Yeah. Okay. Something cost... quick. Quick and cut and cheap. Two hundred fifty. Two hundred fifty silver. I need it now. All right, you can have it now. Two hundred fifty silver. All right, I'll give him the money. You'll have to fit uh -huh. it yourself if it doesn't fit, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. And I'll go okay. back. I'll go back to the, to the horse, the horse energy thing, mm -hmm. and I'll wrap it up in leather. See what it looks like. 
Does it look presentable? Like from far away, would it look like a horse? Absolutely not. Have you ever seen leather barding? <laughs> no. No. Um, Christ, can I get a bigger image? Like it might cover part of the head and the majority of the body. It wouldn't cover the 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 feet. Um it wouldn't cover like other parts of the head it wouldn't cover the snout of course you know the mouth has to be free it wouldn't cover the tail yeah it basically kind of covers the you know the face um maybe maybe like part of the back of the neck but not the sides yeah. and, and underneath um and it would cover the body pretty much from shoulder to ass um and as low as like just basically as low as the body of the horse but then the legs would stick out from there All right, I'll, I'll go back out and then I'll buy lots of bandages. <laughs> okay, <laughs> lots of linen bandages. Yeah. Okay. And I'll come back. How much does that cost? Uh, well, you enough to be able to wrap up the exposed parts of your horse, I presume. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me think about that. That'd be probably enough to cover the clothes of two people. Linen. Um, you're gonna spend another ten silver pieces on on the on the linen, yeah. All right. It's nothing fancy. It's just lots of it. All right. Then I'll go back, and then I will wrap the horse up in the in the bandages. The horse is, that, your, is that what we're calling Beelzebub now? Beelzebub. <laughs> yeah. He's the horse now. Beelzebub the horse. Okay. Now that's going to take all of your day five. All right, that's fine. Does it look good. presentable, though, by the end of the day? It looks stupid, but yeah, I mean, it's covered. <laughs> that's fine. It's it's covered. Right. After, and then after it's done, I'll have him begin lesson one. You cover the eyes and everything, right? I presume? Yeah. Cool. All right. Okay. I mean, it's a, it's a demon made of pure energy. It, it, can, it doesn't need yeah. eyes to see. <laughs> Um, it doesn't even have eyes. <laughs> so, okay. All right. Day six. Okay. Anybody, anything? <laughs> so day six, you're finishing your, your, um, yes. Transcription. I have finally finished the transcription and <laughs> I'm going to spend the morning refreshing my spells now that I have stuff available to me. Okay. Um, Let's see here. Um, well, day five and day six is your transcribing. So day seven, you'll be changing your spells, yeah? Studying your spells. Well, it was day four and day five that I was transcribing. Well, first one you finished in I... three days. That's right. Yeah, sorry. You're right. right. Yep. So day you're six. right. So day six. Mm -hmm. Cool. I apologize. My math was off. No worries. I did a lot of math in the hour and 17 minutes since this session started. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I need to go and make some purchases. <clears throat> so I need two books that are worthy of spell books. So okay. I have like a backup, backup book. Those they I think are cost 50 silver pieces. Oh, it's 100 silver 100 pieces a piece? hundred silver each. Yeah. Okay, so that's 200 silver. Right. Hold on, let me get my calculator out here. But you're in London. You can find them. Exactly. You can find the books. So I get two of those. Mm -hmm. So that's 200. I also buy three blank regular books, which is 15 silver each, or 15 silver total. They're five silver each, according to the, uh, what do you call it? Equipment list. OK. Uh, I was going to get some. I looked up ink. It's like one copper per ink, it says. Probably so one copper I, per vial. Right. So but I'm basically what I'm going to do is like buy a pint of ink. And writing utensils, I figured that comes to like a, a couple silver, maybe, because it'd have like the pen knife and a, a bunch of quills. Sure, okay. That kind of stuff. So I put one on one silver because I wasn't sure how much all that would cost, but with like the little knife in there, I figure, what, like five well, silver? Well, 10 copper is one silver. Okay. Um, okay, so five silver? Yeah. All sounds together? Right. Okay. And then a chest, which is 10 silver pieces. And 
a wagon for us because we're going to be moving. Okay. Uh, so that's another your 150 wagon. silver, it looks like. Yep. You need horses to pull that wagon. And, yep, two horses, which is another 200 silver. Mm -hmm. So all together comes about 580 silver, it looks like. Okay. Write all that stuff on to your equipment. Yeah, that's not buying any uh, like rations or anything yet. Oh, right. What did it do with the war horse? Left it behind, right? It's left behind. I need to, we need to get it shipped somehow. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they can ship horses on, on ships for sure. It's been done. Right. I mean, that's how they got horses to the Americas, right? Right. Because the horse is not indigenous to North or South America. Yeah, but we really didn't have the facilities to take it with us at the time. Not on the submarine. So no. Yoop is going to be the one. Or mm -hmm. not Yoop. Uh, Henry is going to have to be the one to do all that. That'll take some time, but that's okay. Yep. Yeah. So we won't worry about Epona right now. She or he? I don't know if it was ever determined the uh, sex of Epona. I think it's a she. Epona, yeah, probably. So she is still in Amsterdam. Um, where's the list of things? Ah, oh, yeah. So here we'll just say um, Antonio's. Um, two. Um, we'll call them workhorses, right? Because they're for pulling wagon. Workhorses. Right. And wagon. Yep. Okay. Cool. I just wanted to make sure I have it listed here in the thing because you have to pay to stable and all that later. You won't have to today. Not while you're in London. All right. You could buy you could buy them for delivery the day you're leaving or whatever. It's fine. Exactly. Okay. Cool. Anything else before you guys depart London? Um, anything else that I need? Anybody else want to do any carousing? Last chance for carousing. Night six. I'm pretty broke right now. <laughs> Are you? Come on. Almost. You got some more money. Three D six. I got them in my hand right now. <laughs> ah, fuck it. I got a demon. average roll would be ten. <laughs> All right, fuck it. Let's go. I'm down. Oh, it worked. Nice. Eleven. So one thousand one hundred silver pieces. Right. And uh, roll a saving throw versus poison. Yeah, you got a oh. demon. Wrapped up like a horse in your basement. <laughs> Looks like a like a horribly bandaged horse that shouldn't even be able to see <laughs> wearing leather barding. Uh, I rolled eleven. You rolled an eleven. Is that a pass on your poison save or a fail? I think that's a fail. Let me check. I hope it is. That'd be more interesting that way. Yeah. Oh yeah, fail. it definitely is. <laughs> fail. Yeah. All right. So. Despite your best efforts, you fall head over heels for your latest dalliance. Give me a percentile roll, please. You meet a lady. You fall in love. <laughs> 70. 70. She's already married. Okay. What's your luck? Uh, is... oh, sorry, you don't have a luck. What's your lowest ability score? That's what I always do for luck. Yeah, it is seven dexterity. Okay, she's already married, and she is married to a local lord. Oof. A noble. That's fine. He's going to have a ten hit, hit die demon. You, you get 1,100 silver pieces. Or you okay. spend 1,100 silver pieces, sorry. You get 1,100 experience points. Extra. Got it. Um, you wake up with a bit of a hangover the next day. Um, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Now, the next day is day seven. Uh, wait a minute. Actually, let me look at my, my calendar here. Because I think actually you're going to say eight days. Now that I think of it. Because I figured you wouldn't leave till the Monday. It would make sense, right? 
you might actually have an extra day. Um, surprise, surprise. Let's see, bookmarks, rogues, riches, sixteen thousand. Yeah, hey, I went, I went bust on the uh, carousing roll. You you broke. Did yeah. did you have eleven hundred silver? You saved a thousand, mm. I know, on your. Yeah, uh, with all the other spending I did, I went bust like a negative one hundred. Negative one hundred. Oh, so you owe yeah. money to the to somebody as well. Okay, so you arrived on a Saturday. Day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That was the Saturday. So now we're on to Sunday, the fifth. It's a half moon tonight. Um, and you're a hundred silver pieces in debt. I went from six six grand to negative hundred. <laughs> it goes quick. Life of um, a of a adventurer. So, or you, unless you can borrow the difference from a party member, would anybody loan him a hundred silver so you can pay off these? Uh... I go, I go crying to Antonio. Yeah, not. A, I can do that. Oh, he gives you a hundred silver pieces to pay oh. off, pay off these guild or whatever they are. You're an angel, Antonio. An angel. Indeed, but I've never been to Africa. I I will I will show you something <laughs> I'll show you something special later on tonight. Oh, wonderful! Yeesh. I'll go back and <laughs> pay off the dude. Whatever you do, don't let him tie you up and put a bag over your head. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I know not to do stuff like that. <laughs> All right, cool. So you're able to pay off the gambling debt. And I want to I want to start off my first magic lesson if possible. Magic lesson? Yeah. From the demon? Yep. Okay. How is it going to teach you magic exactly? <laughs> well, you tell me. <laughs> okay. First lesson it's going to teach you is how to free yourself from any bonds. All right. I'll listen. You nearly intently. need to. And it will teach you how to take all of the energy within you and turn it into a burning flame to burn yourself free of whatever binds you. And all the uh, linen and the leather barding, everything melts right off of it. God damn it. (laughs) (laughs) And it's there before you. See, Master, now you try. Put this sack over your head. Uh, I'll do it. <laughs> put a sack over your head? Yeah. Okay. All right, did I burn it? No. <laughs> <laughs> right, no. I'm gonna take the I'll take the sack off and I'm gonna look at the demon intently. Are you playing games with me, demon? I do games. You are to teach me the ways of magic. Your form is insufficient. Uh, You are you then. Your meager mortal mind cannot understand the concepts of hell magic. Uh, I'll start pacing back and forth. Uh, after that, I'll go back to my chair in the uh, living room. Okay. Back by the fireplace. <laughs> I'll open the storybook and I'll read intently. Well, this that was what that was um, day seven, right? That would be the, the Sunday or day yeah day seven yeah. Saturday. Um, oh no, day seven is Saturday actually. So yeah, that's a Saturday. Apologies. Uh, there's a banging on your door. <laughs> What's your first name, Hobbs? Uh, Gideon. Gideon Hobbs! Come out here immediately! You'll pay for what you've done! I'll go, I'll go to the door, but I won't open it. I'll say, who goes there? Who disturbs a rich man when he sleeps? <laughs> name generator. Name generator. Um... Here we go. 
It is I, Lord Tyler Cunningham, the man you cuckolded last night. My wife is dead because of you. Sorry, I'm fucking can't <laughs> like blowing out the microphone here. Sorry, I just saw the uh, red bars. <laughs> My wife is dead because of you, and you'll pay for it. Come out now. I don't recall. I have the guard with me. We'll break this door down if we must. We can settle this man to man, or you can rot in, ha- rot in the jails. It's your choice. I'll, I'll yell out, how many guards do you have? <laughs> You're just yelling through the door? Yeah. He says, 10,000. Right. I challenge I'll, you uh... to a duel of honor. All right, I'll get my pistols up and then I'll open the door. He doesn't have 10,000 guards. There's like three. <laughs> and they look kind of bored. <laughs> All right, I'll open the door. I'll, I'll accept your duel. You didn't really technically commit any legal crime, I don't think. I don't think adultery was illegal per se. Um, it could get you excommunicated from the church or something for sure, but not necessarily arrested. However, since you have accepted his challenge to a duel, um, you get to choose the weapons. Yeah, I'll choose the flintlock pistols. Hmm. Okay. And I have two, and I'll uh, offer him one. No. I'll not use your weapon. I'll have someone fetch one for me, and he pays, um, pays one of the guards to go down and to buy a flintlock pistol with a bag of shot and powder. So you have to wait till he brings that back. I'll sit down in my chair while I'm waiting, reading from the storybook. Okay. Once they do bring it back. Um, I mean, by that time, it's like midday. It's still early. And, uh, yeah, so how are you going to do this? In terms of dual. Uh, classic, back-to-back, take 10 paces, turn around and shoot. Yeah, classic style. Flintlock pistols, so they can do that. You know, they can load it up. and. Okay. So roll initiative. Lord... Okay. What did I say? Tyler Cunningham, right? Lord Cunningham is on seven. Can I use my bless spell? Yeah, you can use that for how many you want to add to your initiative? Uh, Four points. Points. So roll your d6. What's your dexterity (laughs) modifier? Uh, Minus one. So I rolled a three. So minus one is two, plus four is six. He still beats you. Um, although technically you'll go simultaneously, really, but I mean it all happens in the same segment within us less than a second. So he fires. What's your armor class? It is thirteen. Oh, let's roll for misfire. Do this properly. It does not misfire. He hits I'm you. No misfire. And he hits you for seven points of damage. Oof. All right. And you can take your shot. Yeah. Pretty much, I, you know, your, your gun goes off before the bullet hits you, but, you know. Yeah. I'll use the rest of my bless for the shot. Okay, roll. Uh, 15 plus 5 points. That'll hit. His armor class is 16. Yeah. You hit him. All right, and 6 points of damage. 6 points of damage, you kill him. Nice. Uh, You're wounded. He's dead. Shame, I'll say. <laughs> I'll go over and are the guards watching me intently? Um, not so much now. They're checking him. Yeah, he's dead. Okay, they're you know, they um decide to leave his body there. They'll send somebody to pick it up. All right, I'll, I'll loot his body. Have a good day, Mr. Hobbs. Good day to you, guards. As I'm bleeding from my arm. <laughs> oh, you loot his body. Okay, well, he did just have to buy a pistol and shot. Um. How much is shot and powder? I think they're one silver each, yeah? Yeah, about. 
Right. Yeah, he's got about 12 silver pieces on him. Nice. I'll pay for my dinner. <laughs> and I'll go back to my house. <laughs> <laughs> Zero level human duels a, a, a party uh, or a, an adventure. He doesn't have no he doesn't typical, have hit points. This is a typical day for Hobbs. Seven hit points. Yeah, you weren't badly wounded, right? I assume you were. Uh, you had a lot more hit points like, than seven. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. God, Hobbs. <laughs> what a son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, what happened is um, the woman hung herself and she left a, a, a suicide note decrying Damn. that she did so over a uh, spurned lover that she'd met the night before, a Mr. Gideon Hobbs. <laughs> then Mr. Cunningham went to the bar that uh, he got word that his wife had been in the night before, got information on who Gideon Hobbs was and managed to find out where you were staying. And, yeah. and there it is. I'll go afterwards, I'll go to Antonio and then I'll invite him back to my house. And then I'll wait after everyone got their whole little their own little scene. Yep. So day seven. Um you're leaving on day nine. So technically you've got two more days for you to go. I have a couple of things I want to do before we leave town. Please do. What would you like to do? Cole? He wants to go to uh like a weapon shop, try to get a Maybe like a compound short bow, something that'd be a little bit more powerful. Okay. Um, some new arrows. Get his sword and his knives all sharpened up. And, you know, take care of his pistols, that kind of stuff. A compound short bow? Does it exist here? Just a short bow. Yep. Um, a short bow would cost twenty-five silver. Would it be better than the one that I have? Probably not. Then. You have a short bow? Yeah. No, not really. Okay, I'll just keep what I have then. Okay. Cool. There Bunch we go. of arrows. Need a quiver full of arrows. A quiver of I arrows. I have some arrows, but most of them are gone. So the quiver is five silver, and um, I think it comes with arrows, if I recall correctly, from the um, equipment. It's under the missile weapons. Arrows across was Oh, no, they cost five copper each. So five copper times 20 is 100 copper or 10 silver. So it's 10 silver for that plus five silver for the quiver. So 15 silver total for a quiver full of arrows. All right. You can get your stuff sharpened, no problem. Um, I'll just charge you a silver piece per, per blade, whatever you're getting sharpened, yeah. Okay, and um, have him check the chain mail, make sure that's still in good condition. Um, the pistols. You've been in a lot of fights, right? Yeah, it seems like you inherited it from one of the other guys that died oh, yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the chain mail, the armor of a dead man. Mm, that's bad luck. <laughs> um, luck yeah, you can, you can get the, the, the armor touched up for five silver. Okay. Yeah, let's see. I'm just looking at my list to get see if there's anything, shape again. anything else that I needed to get done. Um, yeah, I need to buy the, I need to buy um, a pistol, not a rifled pistol, but a regular pistol. That can yep. load That's okay, because they don't, they don't make rifled pistols in England at this time period. So yeah, you can buy a, a flintlock oh. pistol. It would cost you 37 silver and five copper. So the time. rifled pistols I took off of uh, of uh, Rachel's last character, they said rifled flintlock, so they weren't really rifled then. No, they're right? rifled. You got those. Oh. You got those somewhere else. You didn't get those here in England. Oh, it's just not England that's doing it. Okay. In England, they didn't okay, really cool. do rifled barrels yet. Okay. All right. So but you got those from mainland uh, Europe. So. Okay. So the regular pistol. Plus, I need a hundred shot, and I need uh, fifty regular shots or something like that. Well, I need a hundred regular shots. I need probably fifty of the scatter shot. Okay, so one bag of one hundred round shots is one hundred shot. Yeah, round shot is two silver pieces. Okay, scatter shot. I guess that's per shot. 
How many you want? 50 of them? Starter shot, yeah, yeah 50. Okay, that's going to cost you 50 silver. 50 silver? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I won't, buy, I won't buy that many. Maybe 10 then. 10? Okay, 10 silver. Yeah. 10 silver. Okay, so we got 15 going there. Okay, they're expensive. Okay. Um, powder? Yeah, I need. A powder horn yeah. holds 50 shots worth of powder. Yeah, that's what I need. So one powder horn, one silver. Okay, well, let's do two powder horns and so two silver. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, or you can buy a barrel of gunpowder, 2,500 shots for 150 silver pieces. <laughs> no, I don't want to carry around a barrel of gunpowder, not with the people I'm running around with. Don't tell them what might happen. Uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. That's not all I can think of there. Right but, yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah, that's all I can think of is that he really needs. So. Yeah, that's it. The rest of the time, he'll just have some dinner, something like that. Wait it no out. problem. Yeah, you, you was happy anything. to buy you dinner or whatever, you know, pay, pay for your um, your meals, your daily meals anyway. He's not going to pay for your carousing, yeah. but he'll pay for your daily meals. No problem. Yeah, I'm not carousing. Okay. Anybody okay. else? All right. You want to continue looking, Antonio, for random weird stuff in the uh, the various shops? Oh, that wasn't me. Not Antonio. Sorry. Jose? Klaus? Sure. Why not? I'm always fucking up names. Sorry. No worries. Okay. Don't find any on day six. You want to look again on day seven? Yeah, why not? It's a little adventure. Nope, nothing there. It's three days searching and find nothing. Nothing that seems to be a. I didn't say you find nothing, but you find nothing of any kind of magical significance. Yeah, okay. You got one more day left. Do you want to do that or do you do something else? Or it's I'll do that, and and then at the end of the day, if things don't pan out, he would go and buy another wagon and horses. And park it somewhere outside of town. <laughs> Buying another wagon? And horses, you said? Yeah, because uh, what you might call it, the ones that I had, we had to sell them. So. Yeah, you know, mm. Antonio bought some. I did buy a horse, yeah. Wagon and horses. Oh, okay. So we have one. something to travel with. <laughs> yeah. How I'm many just horses saying... you bought? You bought I got two. two for the wagon. Yeah. Okay, I'll get two more and add them to... Away. More horses? Okay, it's another 100 silver. Or it's 200 silver. Sorry, 200 silver. Put that on the list. Rose to Rich's notes. Um, so Antonio bought two horses, and Klaus added two more horses. Klaus, two times work horses. Okay, cool. As uh, much as it pains me to say this, uh, Hobbs, <laughs> what do you do for your last uh, couple of days? Uh, I need my spell book, so I'm going to go get that back. Yeah, well, you could have probably gotten that back a couple of days ago, in fairness, but yeah, All no right. problem. You get your spell book back. Yeah. All right, I'll do that, and I will prepare my spells for the day. I will prepare two levitates. And then I will go back to the basement demon. Yep. This bastard. Now no longer covered in linens and barding. Right, and I'll command him to sprout wings from his back like a bird. Um, okay. He sprouts wings from his back in his energy form. And I'll see if he can fly. I'll, I'll, I'll he cannot fly. Off. He cannot fly. Did he even try? He, he tries. It doesn't work. Interesting. He is not a flying demon. All right. Then I'll ask him to grow a sail on his back, a small sail. Okay. And he will do so. All right. Does it look like it like catches wind? No, because he's made of pure energy. I know, he but is... the sail doesn't look like it could cast like cast like uh like grab wind if it 
if he was on the outside. Um, maybe, yeah, sure. All right, so I'll, I will wait till nighttime. Mm-hmm. And then I'm assuming my house has like a backyard or something with some walls. Um, no. Nope. It's right. like it's like a corner piece of a building. There's multiple <laughs> houses in the some, one building. All right. Then I will. I wait till nighttime, and then I'll look outside the house mm-hmm. and see if there's any people around. Um. Uh, yes. A lot of people. No, some people. Including a couple guards, trolling. <laughs> Most of the people are like revelers or drunk and just kind of out. People, you know, never do well. So they they don't have any real jobs, or whatever. They're out drinking on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, man! Fuck this demon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> hey, sometimes you just gotta eat some people. All right, I'll... sometimes you just gotta fight your way through the city of London to. Uh... <laughs> are the <laughs> are the guards you could like just standing... buy more buy more linens, cover them up? Are the are the guards? Uh, I only have twelve silver. Are the, <laughs> are the guards standing around or are they patrolling? What are they doing? Um, uh, there is. Two of them leaning against the building across the street from your house, just ah, watching the, uh, the the drunks <laughs> pass by. Hmm. Does my house have a back door? No. Wait a minute. I have a I have a chimney, right? Yes. All right. I will bring the demon upstairs. Mm-hmm. And let's tell it to get in the chimney. Okay. He goes into the chimney. Nice. All right, then I'll go outside, go to the back of the house, and climb up on the roof. Are they watching me the whole time while I'm doing this? Oh, you're climbing up on the roof? Roll a stealth roll. <laughs> Six. Okay, you walked around the back, though, yeah? Yeah. So, no, they don't watch you. They just watch you walk out and watch you walk around the back. And they All don't right. follow you or anything. So I'm going to go over to the roof. Okay, give you a climb roll. Oh, God. And a hob trying to climb his house. Three fail. <laughs> okay, you climb up a little bit and you fall off. You're not a very good climber. All right. I'll go back into the house. Okay. <laughs> I will cast Levitate. One of the, on the guards demon. across the street says, uh, Everything okay over there, Mr. Hobbs? Yes, yes, everything is fine. And I'll go back in the house and then I'll cast Levitate on the demon. Okay. And I will command him to use the sail as soon as he (laughs) as soon as he exits the chimney. (laughs) And then I want to see what happens. Okay. So levitate lasts for how long? Oh, God, I think it's like an hour or like ten a turn per level or something. Let me see. It's a concentration thing too. If you move, engage in combat, or damage, or take any other action, the spell ends immediately. So you cast Levitate on him and you stay inside the house. Yeah. So I'm going to be... Him up. Yeah, I'm going to Levitate him up the chimney. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and as soon as he exits the chimney, I want him to use the sail and see what happens. Um, okay. So, <clears throat> yeah, how long do you wait before you decide to let go of the spell and go outside? Uh, a couple of minutes. Okay, you go outside. Guards talk up. Hello again, Mr. Hobbs. 
You recognize is, one, one of them was there when you killed the uh, Lord Cunningham in the duel last night. All right. That's how he knows your name. And you look up and you see your demon is sitting on your roof. <laughs> the guards, the guards don't react to this. They thing? haven't noticed it. <laughs> it's on the roof. They're not looking at the roof. Oh, God. Is there anyone else just the, or just the guards? No, there's other people roaming around, but nobody's paying any attention to the roof of your building. So, Hopefully there's no foot pads up there. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Ah! Foot pad falls off the roof. <laughs> All right. I'm going to tell the demon to get off the roof from the back of the building. Not saying a word, just kind of using hand motions to like command it to go okay. off the side, off the side of the house. Okay, down behind the building. Okay, you go around and meet it in the alleyway behind the house, behind the building, yeah. I should say. The house is in. Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's there. It's All pretty. Right, pretty it's pretty out. noticeable. It's it's not invisible. And right, I'm gonna get on it in its horse form. Okay. It takes the okay. shape of a horse. <laughs> then I'm going to ride off. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to die. Okay, just riding through London, heading <laughs> towards the uh, the gates. Yeah. Okay, as fast as it can move, Yeah. which is human speed. <laughs> okay. Yep, that's what yeah. I'm doing. Yeah, you scare the shit out of a lot of fucking people. Um, wow. Wow. Okay, yeah, you scare the shit out of a lot of people. A lot of people freaking out, screaming, like, what the fuck is going on, man? What's that guy? You know, just, they, they can't comprehend what the hell you're doing. You're riding on this horse-like shape for energy, pure energy. Oh, which, by the way, hurts, doesn't it? Does it? <laughs> yeah. It does 1d8 damage at touch. It's amazing. Is it... The, is that oh, that's all not necessarily time, or it has to direct? <laughs> yeah, that that's a fair point. No, okay, I'll say it has to be directed. It can because it's pure energy, so that energy can change forms. It can't be destroyed, but it can change forms. So we'll say it's in almost like a like a wind like form, so it doesn't hurt you to ride it. That's fair. Right. That's fair. Yep. Yeah, you ride it out. People screaming, running. I mean, they're gonna tell stories about this night for a long time. Oh, hell yeah. Um, then I. But amazingly, you don't encounter any guards on the, the route you take to the gate until you get to the gate itself. Um, the gates will be open. Yeah, the gates will be open. Shit, it's a big city. It's not, there's no war here. Uh, God, yeah. am I going to get away with this? <laughs> uh, let me see if anybody has the... Uh... Oh, okay. Yeah, they definitely are going to shoot crossbows at you as you ride out. Um, right. Would they though? Would they, would they just see this? Yeah, they probably think something fucking horrible was going on. So yeah, and I, and I rolled a 20 on your luck roll, so um, so there's going to be a couple I think that's a, shots. I think that's a morale check to see if they don't shit themselves first. A 20 is basically a fumble for you. Oh, so, <laughs> don't give me any ideas. I might make it worse. And the and Hobbs, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to say four. Four shots. First one misses. Second one misses. Third one hits. Fourth one hits. Oof, this might be it, gentlemen. <laughs> so you take six points of damage from the first one that hits you. Okay. I'm at four. <laughs> and you take eight <laughs> points of damage from the second one that hits you. All right, and I'm dead. <laughs> um, so hold on, we wow. will determine this on our alternate death chart for the campaign. <laughs> that's what it's for. Uh, we go to rogues or riches. Two cross, two heavy crossbows. Bam, bam. I knew that um, someone was going to get me killed. Not the way you thought it would happen, huh? <laughs> but that's okay. Like I said, roll d20, please. Let's see what you rolled. Uh, 20. 
20. Yeah. To death and back. Against all odds, the character comes back from the brink of death. Oh, not, wow. not yet. You'll come back later, but you will come back from the brink of death, making a full recovery and gaining a level. Make yourself level oh. six, please. Hobbs is a legend. Now, you do go unconscious. You, you die. You're on the brink of death. Right. But the demon carries you and keeps going. All right. Sounds uh, good to me. The question is, where did he go? <laughs> Who knows? What are the odds, right? Now, <laughs> on day eight, when you guys are preparing to leave, you can't find Hobbs. You go to his house. He's not there. But you keep hearing stories. People ta- all around the city talking about some fucking witch or demon or something went riding through the city on an invisible horse scaring all the fucking locals etc uh the guards at the gate supposedly he rode straight through you know it's almost like a uh like a headless horseman story you know rode straight through the city straight through the gates a couple of guards swear they shot him dead but he kept going um and the only good thing is that he seems to have left town so um Antonio, I bet you can put two and two together. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. I'll just act as amazed and horrified as everyone else, of course. I've been putting on a false face for a long time. Mm-hmm. Does anybody need a bio break before we uh, move into the second part? <laughs> no? I gotta pass this along in the chat there. <laughs> Klaus types, this guy is witch Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> nobody, nobody needs a bio, no? No, I'm good. Uh, no, I'm carry good. on then. Um, carrying on. So, it's time to leave. Yes, Hobbs is gone. So. No idea where he's gone. Um, you'll get new word that he rode out of the North Gate, which is the same gate you gotta go through. But yeah. Now, we had discussed where we're headed, right? We know where we're going. Oh, yes, yes. By this point in time, it would have been determined. Yeah, Yoop has done some, some research for you and found, uh, he said, South Lincolnshire is a, a good, you know, cheap place for building, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, if you stay in, in contact with him, it's only, a, it's like a five day ride from London. Five days ride. Okay. So, five days got ride. Three of us, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, that's 15 rations at least. So, and we got a wagon. Yep. Yes, you do. I mean, we're not going to be going super fast. So that's at like wagon pace, right? Like walking pace, five days travel. Yeah, I was thinking 24 miles a day. Okay. It's a little over 100 miles. You get there about midday on the fifth day, which would be Friday. So, about tw- I'll buy us uh, 20 days of rations then. That's 20 silver. Okay, cool. And, yep, so I put a lot of my, uh, everything, all my valuables are in the chest, stuffed up right under the um, the driver's seat. Okay. And, because uh, I'm going to be piloting the uh, wagon, so that's easier for me than riding. Sure. And then, you know, pile, like, stuff on top of it and in front of it, because my book is in there, uh, the Malleus. My two empty spell books, all the other books, the gold that I have. I mean, it's just chests. It's going to hold all that stuff. Right. Plus, I had oh. my other chest. No, right. The Malleus had its own personal chest. I forgot about that. So that is on the ground. And then the other chest is on top of that. Okay. I got a quick question for Ronnie. Did, did Hobbs have all of his, his stuff with him, or did, is it still in your house? Ah, uh, God. I would say it's probably still back in my house. Oh. <laughs> did you Luckily, you to... didn't have much money and stuff, did you? <laughs> did you think to look in his house? Or no, you didn't go into his house, did you? No. You left? Okay, cool. So all of his stuff is still there, including a spell book. Yeah. Okay. Oh, really? Oh, too bad. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> I mean, I would have knocked, checked the door, but imagine it was locked, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so if it was locked and he didn't answer, I, just, I wouldn't uh, say it's locked. It's uh, 
but I left it open when I was. But you went through the backyard, and I wouldn't have gone through the back. So the no, front no, no, door, no, no, he doesn't have a back door. Oh, he yeah, doesn't have a back door. Yeah, didn't go out the back front door. door. Okay, so if it was unlocked, would you have walked in? If it was unlocked, I would have walked in, yes. Okay, no sign of him. Stuff huh. is all still there. But you've heard the stories. Mm. So he may be dead. He may be? I'll throw all of his stuff. I'll go to look around, see the, the bedroom, toss all of his stuff in a blanket and tie it up. Carry it out? And carry it out and toss it in the wagon. In case if we find them, then hey, look, here's all your shit. And if we never find them, hey, I got another spell book. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yep. Okay. And then you head off for the Hamlet of Nonsbeck. Mm hmm. Which is there. So you guys will arrive on the Friday. Okay. Now, Hobbs, you're going to come to probably the next day at uh, right. at one hit point. Okay. Um, where the hell am I? <laughs> at that near death experience. You don't know where you are. You're you're um, in the woods somewhere. Is, is the demon still here? He is there. He's your, he's your master. He's with you until death. Oh, wait. You came back from the brink. Of death. <coughs> yeah, you did not die. So, mm. right? Is that the wording? Yes. Character comes back from the brink of death. Yep. So you, uh, you did not die. So he's still there. All right. Then I will begin walking <laughs> north. Okay. Try to figure out where you are. If you yeah. if you're gonna try, I mean, you can eventually figure out. Um, how about this for the explanation? As he collapsed forward onto the horse, the iron tips of the crossbow bolts penetrated into the demon and was and they were vaporized through his body, cauterizing the wounds, keeping him from dying. Ooh, cool. Yeah. And unfortunately cool they're just man. plain iron. They're not they're not they're not cold iron. So Exactly. <laughs> yep. All right. So yeah. So you're going to just try to find a road and head north? OK. Yeah. Um, I guess what would probably be the um, most um, sort of look for here. The best way to do this anyway for, for party purposes would be to say um, that eventually you'll, you guys will meet on the road. Um, you'll hear the wagon coming, and then you'll see, oh, it's uh antonio and cole and klaus with a wagon and four horses i'll come out of the woods and then i'll wave over to them hobbs <laughs> comes out of the woods not looking too good let's see can can i look at him and tell that he looks so fucked up oh yeah 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 i mean he's a uh, one hit point you know what i mean like yeah, all my fancy, there, all my fancy clothes, his clothes are torn. Are torn and anybody bloody. else like around or no? Nope. He's walking <laughs> out of the thickness of like some I'm going to cast pure wounds on him. Klaus comes over quickly to, to cast uh, cure wounds. You guys time him. hit points. There oh, you go. Strange man I've never spoken to. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> and you look like shit. <laughs> what happened to you? Goodness, Klaus. Or goodness, Hobbs. I'm assuming the demon comes right after me. Okay. Yes. And so you will all see this massive distortion of pure energy. Um, yeah, it, it's quite obviously <laughs> demonic. It's something. something I'm magical. pulling my cross out. <laughs> I'm getting ready to cast just in case. And Hobbs. it will say to Hobbs, the one who touched you, do you wish me to end it? Hmm. No, no. <laughs> Not today, friend. Not today. This is a friend, a friend of mine. Yeah, Klaus can't help himself and is going to go like, what the fuck is that? It's yeah. speaking English. 
Oh, a gentleman. He doesn't speak English, does he? Um, <laughs> I don't either. Yeah. Antonio doesn't. Yeah. No, just you're the only one who does. I don't think. Does Klaus speak English? I don't know. You never rolled for it. Roll d6. I, uh, one second. What's your intelligence? Uh, my intelligence is nine. Okay, so roll d6. Uh, so I think I failed. I got a one. You got a one? That's a success. Really? You nice. Speak English. Oh nice. shit! So everybody okay. speaks English except Antonio. I think. <laughs> now I'm the now I'm the coal of the party. Who? Huh? What? What's he saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the demon Beelzebub. Rejoice. Okay, what do you? I hear the name Beelzebub. I'm sure. Yeah. I look yeah. at it. Well, it's not Beelzebub. It's Beelzebub. So it was yes. <laughs> All right. So I look at first, and I don't see clouds of flies, and I'm like, "Oh, he didn't say Beelzebub." So it's obviously Beelzebub. A, a spelling error. It's be, this is this is Beelzebub's uh, distant cousin, Beelzebub. Naka, Naka, Beelzebub. <laughs> <laughs> this is just the form it's taking in this world too. Who knows what it looks like on the That's other true. side? That's a good point. Yeah. Now it's it's big and obvious and uh, and demonic. Not of this world. You have firm control of this creature, Hobbs. Yes, I do. Then I would suggest you uh, instruct it to stay hidden, lest it cause us more trouble on the road. Trouble on the road than is would be necessary. Indeed. I want to put him in the wagon before you get us all killed. Oh, I would say he should hide in the woods and follow us a pace. We're not going that fast. Master, this one speaks a profane tongue. Shall I rip it out for you? Uh, as entertaining as that would be. Not right now. Not right now. Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hobbs is so great. <laughs> yeah, Klaus is going to go back in the wagon just shaking his head. Like, what the hell got into well, are you? You said you bought two horses, also, right? No. Yeah, yeah. He bought two horses attached to yeah, the wagon. So yeah, you have four yeah. horses now pulling the wagon. Oh, they're all pulling the wagon. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just had a terrible <laughs> idea. Excuse me. Uh oh. <laughs> what if I gave my demon a horse skin to wear? Well, do you want to? I know how to find out. <laughs> Anyone have a spare horse? I have 12 silver pieces. Not at the moment. And they are quite more expensive. <laughs> 12, 12 silver pieces. Silver pieces. That's, the hob I, that's the hobs I know. <laughs> I will gladly give you 12 silver pieces for a horse today. I will let you use my demonic familiar for one day. <laughs> yes. No, thank you. Very well. Very well, then. I'll have to take a horse. Yeah, yeah, actually. Do you want to get it into the wagon and try to cover it with a blanket or something? Horse blankets, maybe? Uh, I'll ask him if we're near Nan's bike. No. Or, yeah, we're not going that fast, though. It could easily pace us from the side. Sure could, yeah. Right. yeah. I was just thinking for, for cover. Okay, then I will order the demon to trail us and then yeah, to trail us from the woods. And then when I see another horse on the road, a traveler, I want to eat their horse and then steal its skin. Anyway. Okay, Carl speaks up in Dutch for everybody can understand. This is bullshit. <laughs> We're here in another country, and you guys are coming in as, as foreigners in another country, which you're going to be looked upon as foreigners for a while. So we're here now. We got this dude here with his demon, quote, demon, that's walking along with us. I mean... We're here to settle and to become something here. And this is going to cause just nothing but problems and we'll be on the run again. That's uh, not right. Why did you bring this back here, Hobbs? I mean, I've, 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 I've done well with you and I don't mind your, your piccadillies that you end up doing, but this is something you're bringing up on the whole group. And you know, we came here to settle down, not to be wild men. That was the whole point of making the trek. Yeah, right. 
fellow Englishman. But can you dismiss your demon and tell you need him again? Remember, this is my homeland. I am no foreigner. Well, it's my homeland too. I bet you they're hitting you up by the the net, and they're telling what they'll do to these people that are foreigners. They'll really and, go down on them. Can you and, can you control it? Can you put your demon into something, or can you can put your demon? In? Can you that's why I'm trying and then bring him back when you need him. That's why I'm Master, trying to get a horse skin. It speaks it's hacking, a vain tongue. It, <laughs> it seems agitated. Shall I destroy it? Not right now. Not right now. I'll, I'll quiet him down. I'll shush, I'll shush him. The men are speaking. Did we hear what he said? Or is he oh, talking? Yeah, yeah. Just... It's speaking English. See, look. <laughs> okay, look what he's, what, what's happening now. Trying to kill me. We oh, saved your life. We saved your fair, life, Hobbs. To be fair, you are being a little aggressive towards me. So. Why? Because you're just because you're um, causing harm to come to this group by doing this to us. You should have came in in the dead of night once we got settled, and we could have done something with I'm it. So, I'm sorry. I, I just woke up. I don't. I don't know where I was. You just woke up. Okay. Do something about this demon, but don't go attacking people yeah. on the road. If I you hear all this commotion problem. and I hear uh, Cole yelling, I don't, don't want to. I don't want to kill anyone. I just want. I'm going to touch him, and I'm going to catch center sanctuary because I want to make sure that happens to his. Uh... <laughs> Uh, you're going to cast Sanctuary on Cole? Yeah. What does that do again? That um, makes things not want to attack make him. Saving throws to even attack, yeah. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. Okay, you uh, cast right. Sanctuary on Cole, so that'll last. Now, okay, what level are you? Five. Now, keep in mind, that'll only last for ten rounds, like a minute, so you might want to Hey, some manner that yeah. is not going to be dead. So. You, you, you speak the truth, Cole. You speak the truth. Okay. I will I will dismiss my familiar for now. I'll, I'll order the demon to go carry a trail us in the woods. So, what do you say to the okay, demon I'll... specifically? Uh, just a trail in the, in the woods until we get to like a settlement. Yes. But you told him you told him in private? Yeah. Okay. So uh, when he just he... kind of disappears, then I'll go over and shake your hand and say, Thank you. I appreciate this. I didn't mean to come down hard on you, but you've worked hard to get to England or for me to get back to England and these two to come forth into England and make a new life. So no, we want you, you, you we we're happy to have you with us, but not to not if you're trying to endanger us, you, as you can see. This is very true, very true, Paul. I apologize for my eccentricness. Well, you're you're forgiven for that, and forgive me for being uh, so upstart to begin with. But it was just something that it's something that I can't allow it happen to all three of us, or actually all four of us, including you. So very well I'll, then. Well, we'll uh, put it behind us. All right. I'll walk uh, in the back of the group, and then. As I pass Antonio, I'll give him a wicked grin, and then I'll walk by him. I'll just wink at him as he goes away, as he goes <laughs> by. Okay. And, um, I'll take my place in the party. And you carry on. So you've got, uh, this is the first day out. So that night, uh, the weather is good. Day two. Which is, let me pull up my calendar again here. It's over there. Day two is um, Tuesday the 7th. Okay. Weather is uh, typical, kind of overcast, misty. You know, it's, it's like not really raining, but it's wet. You know what I mean? I don't know how many of you know English weather at all, but it's just kind of annoying. You know, it's it's misting mm. um, as you're walking along. Um, and before midday, you suddenly hear screams coming from behind you down the road. Uh, distant screams. Mm. Um, sounds like the screams of men and, and the, the screams of a horse, perhaps, as well. 
uh, and it lasts for maybe 30 seconds and then it's silent. Well, I think we should continue pick up the pace a bit for a while. Keep an eye behind us in case something comes chasing. I'm, Don't so want curious, to... uh... I'm curious as well, but we have a destination to get to. It's better not to... Uh... Where, where is my familiar? Delay. You don't see it. I'm trying to trail you from the woods. <laughs> I will. I'll summon it to me. Case call it out here, familiar. Here, Beezlebub. Here, Beezlebub. Beezlebub nah, nah, to me. <laughs> I'll clench my fist and I'll, I like conjure it, like thinking of conjuring it, and I'll summon. I'll, I'll say, come, come to. Hobbs. And it comes trotting up wearing a bloodied, um, you know, yeah, a gory horse skin. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's messy. It does not look right at all. It did not do a finesse job. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. But, like, is it wearing it, though? Or it's it wearing it. Bad? Yeah, but it's not covering up all of its parts and, yeah. It's not put on properly. You know what I mean? Like it's. Master, does this please you? Yes, yes, my familiar. Very now, much so. Now I am disguised. Yes. You guys all see this. <laughs> oh, good lord. <laughs> Speechless. You probably smell it too. It smells like the inside of a horse. That is not going to work. Just need a little cleaning. And what more unfortunate sac is the sacrifice for this? Master, I, must have been... I do not understand its tone. Uh, it must have been just uh, a brigand in the woods. <laughs> Master, what does it say? What did, he, did he give me something? No, he's asking you what Antonio's saying. He doesn't understand Dutch. Oh. Demon speaks English, not Dutch. Uh, would demons nothing. speak Dutch? Would it be able to understand? I guess it would understand intention, maybe. Maybe <laughs> maybe know. it knows, maybe it knows the languages I know. <laughs> <laughs> Are we, are we still traveling, or is it nighttime? Uh, this is daytime on day two on Tuesday. All right, it's not so going to get like some... I said, it's it's overcast and misty. It asks, I those vault. It asks I about those... the source of my new coat. Yes. Uh, let's not talk about that. And Antonio gets pissy <laughs> when it comes to certain things. So Antonio is uh, driving the cart, the wagon, right? Yes. I'm I'm riding my my horse, by the way. Klaus would like knock on the thing where you open it to talk to the person who's driving. Well, it's he just a like, uh, it's just an open no, wagon. It's just, just okay. an open wagon, yeah. Okay, he would be. You like, guys don't have a covered please. wagon or anything get to our destination before something happens. Now, this thing does not look at all like a horse. It, it looks like a, an energy demon wearing a freshly ripped off horse skin. <laughs> so where's Rachel at? I mean, where's Hobbs at now? <laughs> I think Hobbs just said he's going to mount it. Uh, well, I'm going to shut my eyes if he's going to do that. I don't want to watch him fornicate with his horse. <laughs> now, all right, so that's something he would you gotta, do. You gotta describe this horse <laughs> a little bit more clearly. So, like, I'm picturing it like this kind of <laughs> like in the horse, kind of okay. Just imagine, no, 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 no. Imagine it's like it ripped the skin off of the horse, like ripped down the middle, right? Uh, and then just threw it on like a coat, and it's hanging off the, the hose are hanging off on the sides, flopping as it moves, you know, like. <laughs> There's blood and gore dripping all over the place. 
no <laughs> eyes, you know, just eye holes. And yeah, that is not going to work. <laughs> can I, can I like fix it, or is it just like too far gone? No, you can't fix fix it. <laughs> You need a lot more bandages, you, and uh, could you make the horse invisible so people can't see it? No, I cannot. Well, actually, I actually could, but it would only last for an hour. Yeah, that's not worth it. Those demons are burden. That's worth it, Ryan. It is indeed. Hey, Hog Rachel, can you um, uh, <laughs> can you make the can you can you make it? Float, because people want you to look up and see it. If they do, they'll think it's some abnormal cloud or something. It seems, personally to me, it seems like the best option would be to have it discard that wretched skin and continue trailing us from the from the sh from the shadows of the woods. Can you make a child size, and I can put my leather armor on top of it, maybe? Master, it wants to get rid of me. It's jealous. If you jealous. should destroy it, or let me. I'll, I'll say nothing, and then I'll, I'll, I'll command it to become the size of a child. I cannot. How tall is it again? Like 10 feet tall? Yeah, it's like 10 feet and four foot wide. And, you know, like, if it were like, made of skin and bone it might weigh close to a thousand pounds or it's big why is it so big Jesus. he's a 10, ten hit hit demon yeah um... and he failed to save the reverse magic so it's more like a 12 hit die demon really all right all right who is the who is the greatest enemy of england at the moment uh well they are involved in let me see hmm English uh, wars, sixteen hundreds. I think it's. Let's see, list of wars involving England. Probably Spain or France. Not necessarily. Well, yeah, France would be okay. So the Anglo-Spanish War is over. The Anglo-French War is over. The Bishops' War has not yet begun. Technically, England is at peace right now, although they are kind of... Everybody's wrapped up in the uh, Thirty Years' War in the mainland, in a sense. And they would be um, kind of supporting like the uh, the Protestant side of the uh, Thirty Years' War, if you will. The um... What would that be? Oh, wait, actually, let me double check here. It might be listed here. 1618 is when that started, right? Um, that doesn't show anything about the... Uh... Oh! They were involved in the Dutch-Portuguese War currently. Um, so, yeah, they are fighting with the Portuguese. Um, that's still ongoing. They're involved in the Thirty Years' War, but they don't, they're not officially a side in that, necessarily, you know? So, biggest enemy, probably Portugal. Um, yeah, probably Portugal. Yeah, Portugal or, I mean, if you want to talk about past enemies, you know, they just finished a war with Spain two years ago, and they just finished a war with France three years ago. All right, and so I will tell the party, I will dismiss my my familiar in the woods and I will bring it along. Bring it into the woods? Yep. Hooves and legs flapping off to the side of the gory horse skin covered energy demon. Alright, and then I'll so I'll go in the woods. I'll tell him I'll catch it. I'll catch it with him. And then I'll go to the woods and I will tell the Beelzebub that Hobbs demands blood and is angry. You demand it blood and are angry? Yeah. I will tell it to slay the enemies of England and go to France and destroy in the name of Hobbes. 
Okay. <laughs> it um, it will trot off back towards London because probably <laughs> the easiest way to get to France is to catch a ship in London. All right, <laughs> I'll the join the party. That will rain down on London tonight or tomorrow. Uh, okay. I'll join the party nonchalantly. It is done, friends. It is done. Thank you. Okay. Are you in the woods? I want to talk to Antonio. Sure, please do. Okay. <laughs> hey, um. I need some information. I mean, I need a, some confirmation from you. Eric, you there? You're muted. Sorry, I thought I was unmuted. I'm sitting there talking away. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yes, what do you, how, what does you need? We've been together for a while now. And I, I do trust you. But can you give me a promise you won't turn out like he has gone? I, we have, you know, we make compromises in our morals sometimes, but this is too much, you know, to have something like that going around with us. <clears throat> don't let the dark side pull you that far. Please don't. You're a better man than that. I'll just leave it there and walk away. All right. Oh, okay. I was going to respond, but... <laughs> Catch him sometime. It's the hardest thing to say to somebody that you've been your best friend for two years, you know, and right. you held each other's back. So it's hard for him to choke out, so he just walked away. Very well. Tuesday night passes. Wednesday day and night pass. Thursday day and night pass. Friday, you will finally arrive at the hamlet of Nonsbeck. Um... Yeah, it's just a gray day. No, no mist. It's not wet this this day. Um, Friday, the tenth of September, it is midday when you arrive in Nonspec, and I have that image again. I can pull it there, there it is. I want to I want to change my Here. clothes and wash up that. a little bit before before I enter the town. I'd like to sure. present that to the party if they want to. Just let's stop and make us look our best when we come into town. It sounds good to me, and actually now I kind of want that bio break. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, actually, well, let's just wrap this up, actually, I think, because it's getting late. Um, well, go ahead, go ahead, and we'll take a quick bio break, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, I'll be right back. Yeah, when he gets back, if anybody, unless anybody else needs a bio. I'm still here. I will. <laughs> What'd you say? I'm still here. All right, cool. Then I'll introduce Nonsbeck. And, uh, yeah. Do a little role play there. I'm not trying to disrupt the party. I just feel that's what Cole would have done. You know, it's just. Oh, no, definitely. I mean. Yeah. And nothing uh, I do. I love the way you play, Ryan. You really don't seriously it's fun, but I mean, Hobbs, you know. yeah, that's great. Hobbs is very obviously insane. Uh, and I gotta <laughs> yeah. like, if it wasn't because like Hobbs is part of the group, Hobbs <laughs> would probably already would have been like, we need to do something about this. But since he, you know, he's been with the group for a while, he's helped them, you know, through shit. He's not gonna, you know. But I am loving the character. It's fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Very, very good, very good character, very good role playing. That's fun. That's fun. Okay. But we got to stay in. true to our own characters, and I think Cole would have been the type that would have came up and said what he said because it was getting a little, a little <laughs> wild. Almost we're getting into D and D type atmosphere, and nobody else has, yeah, you know, yeah. things to get rid of those monsters. Yeah, <laughs> fucking demon, like is crazy. Fucking Ian's screwed me hard with that demon. <laughs> How do you figure? <laughs> what a, a ten hit die demon. 
That's made the of horse. energy. Yeah, the horse bit is comedy, though. <laughs> to be your familiar for the rest, for the uh, duration of your life, <laughs> to teach you about magic. Oh, and you want it also to be able to fly and take uh, the, any form that suits you <laughs> in order to hide its, uh, <laughs> its uh, presence. <laughs> So who is really trying to screw who here? That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I am back. Well, but hey, you know, you know, you rolled. We rolled up the demon. You, you, you have the demon. So now, fair fair. Well, now Spain, Spain will feel my wrath. All right, so we're France, back. Whatever now, I said it was. So there, you see the map I've given you, the Hamlet of Nonspec, where you will be. Uh, Making your um, your new home. Now, there is. Um, so you'll be coming from this road from the south. So the first thing you'll hear is the sound of the hammer at the smithy. Um, basically, the smithy and the road there is up on a hill. Um, the hill is at an equal level along with the other hill um, that the uh, the church and uh, <coughs> the graveyard, etc. are on. So, so the back of the inn actually lines right up with the hill. There's a back door there, um, essentially, um, that leads right out towards the road. Um, you can see the well. You'd be able to see the stables. And, you know, you'll see the, the church on the other hill. Um, and it looks like, if I'm reading that right, it looks like there's even like a uh, leading up to the church, kind of like a bridge, basically. Is that a bridge? What would that be? Um, hmm. Again, the map isn't exactly really matching up with the description that they give in the book. Go figure. So the church, does it say the main entrance is via the west of the building? Well-worn steps. Oh, there's stone steps leading up to the front door cut through the steep hillside. Okay. So really, then, the inn isn't on a hill. I'm going to just scratch what I said about the inn being built into the... Oh, no, I get it. The other side of the inn, obviously, is built into the hill. Yeah, of course, the back door of the inn is facing the church. That makes more sense, and the front door faces the road. Got it. Okay, does the map make sense to you guys? You see where the elevation is? So there's kind yeah. of like ground level, which is where the inn starts. Then there's a 10 foot, 20 foot, and ultimately a 30 foot total climb uh, to the level of the top of the hill where the church is. I got it. Okay. That makes more sense. There was something in the description of the church that, or the inn that confused me about that, but I get it now. Um, so yeah, at the uh, the smithy, um, you'll see the smith in the, in the uh, kind of yard there working. Um, he is a, let's see here, where, where's the, yeah, so, so he's kind of like a medium height, but very burly, strong looking man, uh, messy blonde hair. You can see a tattoo on his right arm of some sort. Um, can't really make it out cause he's swinging a hammer. Looks like he's making some kind of farming implement. Um, there's actually a farmer standing there kind of watching him work. And working the bellows for him is a uh, a tall um, kind of teenager looking, uh, you know, young, young man anyway. Um, and yeah, he's just like kind of working away at the bellows as the smith hammers away at this. Uh, looks like he's making some kind of like some kind of farming tool, like I said, I don't know off the top of my head, but yeah. Um, And then, of course, you see the inn, well, stables, and uh, you can see the church on the hill um, behind the inn. Kind of behind and above, in a sense. The roof of the inn might be a little bit above the, uh, the top of the hill, but yeah. The church is tall enough you'd see it still well behind the inn itself. And this is the, the hamlet. Um, that you has scoped out for you said should be a, a perfect place for young wealthy adventurers to, uh, to make their 
their base of operations. What would you like to do? Hmm. I would, okay, hold on here. So you said there's a farmer, the blacksmith, and another dude, right? Yeah, you, you the see son, the, the farmer the and the teenager working, you know, the teenagers working the bells, the farmers, or the, the, the blacksmith is, is hammering away. And then there's a farmer standing there, presume probably the customer. Well, as we trundle up in the wagon, and the smith is, let's see here. The smith was kind of medium height, you know, I don't know the, where the, the smithy is head. at. Oh, yeah. The smithy's there at the south. Okay, the so... Building. Sorry, do you want me to go then to the full screen? No, no, that's fine. So you... Okay, so you ride in. The smithy is there on your left. Above it is the stables. Then is, I guess that's what a well. Yeah, stables is the on the same level behind it. Yep. There's and then the well. church is on the hill. And the okay. Inn, the, the back of the inn kind of backs right into the... is built into the hill in a sense, you know? Um... Oh, I don't speak English, so I don't see anything. No, yeah. I just yeah, that's what, we, that's what we forgot to do in, in London. You forgot to hire a tutor, no? <laughs> well, I didn't have time to really go around hiring tutors. I had a lot of other stuff I had to happen. I'm hoping that uh, somebody here will be able to fair enough. teach me. I have several languages to work from. Yep, that's fair. Yeah, I mean, Cole and Hobbs are both native English speakers anyway. So Indeed. So what do you like to do as you arrive in town? I will uh, wave and say, hello. <laughs> Farmer waves back. Smith ignores you, keeps on working. As it's, pronounced. it's pronounced, hello, Merrick. Uh, Antonio. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. Almost. Anybody ready to go yes. into the tavern and drink this dirt out of our mouths that we've been eating for the last five days. Hav is always down for a drink. Is that a good idea? Uh, sure. And I'll, I'll look back at the, <laughs> in the distance longingly towards my familiar. <laughs> yeah, right. And I'll go over towards I'll go towards the end. Or to the end. <laughs> Yeah, we'll uh, head towards the end. Okay. So Swing the, the ragged around. I was looking for like an area map. Sorry about that. Yep, yeah, that's cool. You can approach the inn. Uh, the inn, I'll read the... Tell me what the inn looks like here. Let's see. So, I mean, obviously the, the town is a pretty humble looking little place. The inn... There's, uh, what's the stables? Inn, right. So there's a sign hanging above the door, but it's been it's so weathered um, that it's pretty illegible. Um, there's a carving on there. It looks like it might have once represented a, a cow or something, but you don't see any name. I wonder if this place is called the Fetid Calf. It's nestled in the yes side of the hill. Um, Yeah, if you go in, I presume you're going to go in, or are you going to, what do you, pull up your wagon? Yep. Okay. Uh, how long have we been on the road since we've stopped last? We've been on five days. We've been on five I days mean, since we slept in a bed. Oh, since today? A few hours only. Okay, so the horses are probably okay to still be Yeah. walking that for Sounds fine. Let's go in, gentlemen. Let's get some drink. Maybe some food. Indeed, indeed. A little bit better than the rations that we brought, hopefully. So inside, um, the inn, okay. Uh, let's see the description of the interior. There's six tables, which are made of old wooden doors two of which still have hinges and pull rings attached to them. 
sitting on saw saw horses. Um, there is a gentleman behind the bar, middle-aged fellow. Um, he seems uh, seems cheery enough. He's he's quite busy. There's there's a good amount of people inside the inn, which I'll describe in a moment. Um, the other person you see uh, walking around serving the, the many people who are sitting in the inn right now is a bright-eyed, black-haired girl who looks to be about 16 years old, um, and she's beautiful. Um, she is uh, obviously the serving girl. Um, you also see about nine farmers uh, who you know, you presume would be local farmers since it's nothing but farmlands around here for, for probably a mile anyway. Um, there are also 10 ruffians in leather armor. Um, about five of them have short bows. All 10 of them have various melee weapons, you know, clubs, swords, you know, things like that. Uh, maybe an axe here or there. Um, you don't know if they're mercenaries or bandits or soldiers. You have no idea. They're not wearing any kind of recognizable uniform, um, but who knows? But anyway, they're in here also eating and drinking. Uh, the farmers probably, you know, sitting apart from these men. These men would be sitting at like two tables, you know, five of them to a table, um, whereas the farmers are probably spread out around three tables, um, a few here, a few there. Yeah. There is an empty table around. There is one empty table. I said there were six tables, so there happens to be one empty. Um, do you want to take it? Sure. Yeah. I'll tell them to sit down and I'll join, get us a, a beer for everybody or? Yeah, the chairs are just like basically like um, old like tree trunk type things, you know, you just slide up. Um, pull up the log, there. yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you say you're going to the bar, Cole? I know English, so I needed to order. I asked him if, they, if beer is fine. The gentleman will Everybody welcome. Says, yeah. Yeah. Welcome. New travelers. Good day. Good day, yes. Um, can we have a, a, a mug of beer and some cups, please? Yes, of course. Um, let me see. Do you, do, you, do you serve food here too? Awesome. Of course, of course. We have ale, or I have the good stuff if you prefer. We have wine. Um, for food, I can get you a bit of bread, maybe, or some, some soup. Um, or if you prefer a decent meal, uh, of course, we can scrape, uh, scrape together so, some meat for you. Or if you prefer uh, a fancy meal, I can have the, the wife fix you up some real good chicken and eggs. Yeah, chicken and eggs sounds good for us. For We've been how many? on the road for, for a while. Yes. Yes, four. Very well. I can organize that. I'll get the signage out of the way, too. And uh, to drink, four mugs of ale? Yes, please. Very well. That'll be uh, four silver pieces and four copper pieces. Okay, so I'll give him five silver pieces. Okay, that'll be very good. Thank you. I'll have Gail bring those down to you. My name is Bossard, uh, which you would recognize is not an English name. Um, it sounds French. You don't really detect much of an accent on him, though. Uh, maybe he's lived in England for a long time. Yeah, Daniel, okay, tell him my name is Cole. Thanks a lot. I'll walk back over. Okay. He goes back and opens the door to the kitchen and shouts out, you know, give me four, four good meals for our new arrivals, please. Uh, oh, what do you call What's her name? Dorothy. Yes. He comes back out front and starts pouring ales. Okay. I'll tell everybody at the, at the table, ordered a uh, good home cooked meal by his wife. She should be bringing it out soon and or somebody will. And we got some beer on the way. Yep. So, like a couple of minutes, Excellent. might even a couple of minutes later, Gail, the uh, the teenage black-haired girl, 
will come over and bring your, your mugs of ale over and set them down at the table. Say, well, new travelers. I'm Gail. I, uh, I work here. Where are you all from? I am from London, young madam. Oh, the big city. Indeed. In fact, I'm coming, coming from there now. Oh, I'll what? just say, uh, <laughs> well, grazie, mademoiselle, and then uh, <laughs> start digging in. Oh, he's uh, he's foreign. Yes, yes, he is foreign. I'll think back in all the times I was a foreigner in the party. <laughs> well, what about yeah. the rest of you? you? Got a story? Klaus would just say he'd like bow a little, and he would say Klaus, and he would just say he's from Amsterdam, AM, or where the hell we just came from. <laughs> Amsterdam, yeah. Yeah. Oh, another big city. We've seen many big cities since we've been away from England. So what's going on around here? Not much. Bunch of farmers. Some ruffians, she says. Undisturbed. Those guys, are those guys over there the militia? Or? No, I think they're mercenaries. Just left the service from some lord or another. Some petty squabble. In between jobs now, they just uh, passing through. Got some rooms and uh... mm -hmm. yeah. So, what about you? What brings you to Nonspec? Nonspec. Ah, oh, we got back into England and decided to take a trip north. See oh, if we can you... find us a nice place. You came from Amsterdam, I take it. Then she says, looking over at Klaus. Well, it's one of the places we ever been. You know, been through London. And the big city is just too much for us now, so we're trying to find us a place out. And, uh, they're a bit more comfortable place than what London is at this moment. Oh, okay. Well, um. we're on the road, seeing what we can find out, what places we can see that would be adequate for us. I see. Well, if these, uh, if this group are, are moving on later today, then uh, perhaps um, Bosard will uh, rent you some rooms. Yeah, we'll discuss that with him after our meal and see what the group wants to do. And yeah, maybe that might be a, an idea. Thank you. Very good. Well, I'll go see uh, if that food's ready for you. And she walks off. And Hobbs' eyes is for following I, uh, her constantly. Said my greeting incorrectly. <laughs> What'd you say? I said I said my greeting in incorrectly in Italian. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> it's like Giovanni Donna, this young lady. Right. I look over at Cole, and then I'll tell him, "You know, Cole, I did do a good deed while I was in England." Uh, I'm afraid to ask, Hobbs. What was that? Uh, you shouldn't be. I visited a local orphanage and I read them bedtime stories. And how much did they have to pay you for the bedtime stories? No, free of charge. And I fed them well. Yeah. yeah. That's that's a good step. That's a good step. Then. One good deed. One good deed a day from now on. That's the Hobbs way. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully. You could be a good you could be a better man. I bet you're not a good one now, but you could be a better man. Hopefully well, you'll Cole, accomplish that. Cole, you, you you're really helping me to turn a new leaf here. We shall see. I have my doubts on everything, so I'll, I'll we'll dig in I'll dig into the chicken. Yeah, oh, so it definitely. brings out um, brings out like fried chicken and fried eggs and uh, some potatoes. You actually see there's some chickens actually walking around in the bar. 
as well. Just kind of straggle, walk, walk on around in the inn, you know, um, which is interesting, but. Oh, yeah, I, I, I translate what she said in Italian, I mean, in uh, Dutch to uh, our two friends there, Antonio uh, and Hobbs. I think, yeah, Antonio's well, speaks English. English, but yeah. Yeah, Hobbs does, but the other, you guys oh, don't. Said, Klaus, Klaus does. does. Yeah. Klaus does too. He does? Oh. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. He rolled well, for she it. didn't say anything too spectacularly interesting, it seems. Other no. than merc ruffian mercenaries looking for work. Mm. Well, hopefully they don't cause problems, I'll say. Uh, we do to have our first day in our new possible home ruined through the rudeness of uncultured men. <laughs> I wish I wish Antonio was here to share a meal with us. Indeed, I hope he is well. So what I've done, gentlemen, is I I'm trying not to let him know that we're particularly interested <laughs> in this place. Otherwise I think they might you never know prices might rise suddenly. So I'm just going to make it that we're on a trip and this is through our trip and we're trying to see what we can see during the trip to find a place to mm. settle. So Good idea. Yeah. So I'm going to try to play it that way if that's okay with the rest of the party and hopefully we can find something. So what are we looking for? What are you guys we haven't sat down and really talked about that. Are we looking for Separate houses, uh, accommodations together again, uh, I mean, owning, our, owning our own place, what? However we gather is fine by me. I, uh, I mean, I know my requirements and what I'll eventually want to have, but it's not like we are made of money yet. Very true. I think right now the best would be if we get a place we can share, and then later on when we get enough money, we can, you know, get our own place. And we secure lodgings would be something I would want to uh, find right away if possible. Yeah. Would you want to live right near here, or where the the farms out lying from here? I mean, that's something we need to consider. As of right now, I think being here would be the better option. Perhaps we can... Hmm, if these men, though, have rented out all the rooms. They have for... T well, they have up until today. Um, just the, the mm. girls are saying that uh, if they leave, they would, they would probably have lodging here. Otherwise, probably I not. See. I see. Unless we want to sleep on these tables. I'm sure they'd rent those to us, too. Guess we will just have to uh, see what the day brings us. If necessary, I suppose we could always travel off into the the woods to find some place to bed down. We've been doing it for a week already. Yeah, and we yeah. do have a wagon, if anything. <clears throat> right. Doesn't look like there's too many houses around here, even to rent or to to buy. I imagine that we'll have to get something built at some point. Yeah, <coughs> maybe we'll run into somebody that has a little, a little more information on the housing and you know costs and things like that that we could find out. Uh, hopefully. For something like that, I imagine the best person to speak would would be the village's headman. Yeah, we have to ask him. Ask him if we order anything more. I'll go up there and I'll ask uh, the gentleman who's here. He, he has a name that sounds kind of French, but he doesn't have an accent of French. So, mm. interesting fellow. So the food is good. 
Yeah, the food's real good. It's freshly cooked. Okay. I don't know. They had fried chicken back then, but you get the idea. Pan fried. <laughs> you know. yeah. It's not breaded and deep fried, obviously, but <laughs> pan fried yeah. chicken, pan fried eggs, <laughs> fried potatoes, too. Yeah, it's real good, though. It's a, it's a good hearty meal. It's the best meal you've had in days since you left London. So Thank goodness. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And uh, sure enough, after about an hour, the uh, the group of ruffians will up and leave. Keep an eye on them as they go. I want to see if they uh, do anything with stuff that isn't theirs on their way out. Oh, is it because I called them ruffians? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, they don't. They just depart. Well, that's good. I'll still I'll pick up my up my uh, mug of ale and just kind of like wander to the door after they've left. Mm -hmm. You know, wait like a minute. And yeah, you'll see them go to the stables. They get their horses from the stables, and they ride off. All right, heading yeah. um, north. And I'll head towards the bar and Assuming see if I can get a hold of the gentleman. Was sure. Yeah, he's there. He's like, oh, how was the uh, how was your lunch? That was the best lunch I've had since I've got back to England. Thank you very much. Oh well. Give my my respect to the trip. You, uh, Dorothy, uh, right? You flatter us, but I will let her know. Yes, Dorothy is a, okay. is a great cook. Best um, decision I ever made marrying her. <laughs> See, but yeah, a cook her like that. You can't find that. Beauty fades, but cooking only improves. So that's mm -hmm. great. Um, I, I, by the looks that you uh, you know, upstairs, do you rent rooms? We do. We do. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, actually, do you have, have some rooms? available now that those uh, fine gentlemen have left. Do you have four rooms? Uh, well, yes. Yes, I do. Uh, let me see. The uh, rooms cost two silver a night. Um, very, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're simple rooms, but, uh, comfortable enough. They have, they have, uh, beds and, you know, a, uh, a chest for you to keep your belongings in if you need. Okay. Let me talk to my companions and see how long they want to stay in here to take a look at the countryside and I'll get back to you in just a minute. Thanks. So then I'll go back to the table, explain it to them, what you just told me, and ask you guys how long you want to stay here. Uh, do you want to try for a week? Do you want to try for just a few days? Hmm. And how much is it per night? Two silver for each room. And how many rooms do they have? Uh, he said they do have four. They must have more than four. I would guess because he said, I, I do have four. Well, despite our closeness along our travels and in past adventures, I would much rather prefer to have a room to myself. Oh, yeah, that's why I asked for four rooms, because mm. there's four of us. And, and they are rooms. two silver per night. Yes. So that is eight silver per night. Yes. If we well, Gail yeah. sees you guys counting the money. Well, so, I haven't started even counting the money yet. Uh, <laughs> but uh, perhaps 10 days? Sounds fine. Give us a chance. Ask them if the, the rooms are it. secure, if they have secure storage. Okay. So, um, before Cole leaves, I'll <laughs> hand them a gold piece. A gold piece, okay. okay. That's 50 How many silver? Silvers? 50 silver. It's wow. 50. Yeah, I was going to get a couple gold pieces out to pay for the uh, accommodations. But I want to know about a cure, secure. Uh, well, I'll just walk up with him and ask if there's, so he can ask if there's secure uh, storage or how secure the rooms are. Okay. I'll go, I will go up there then. So we go up there, trying to signal him if he's in the back or if he's working on something to come over. Yeah, no, he's not too busy. I mean, it's just the farmers and yourselves in here now. Well, I've talked to our, our friends. have talked together, and um, um, this is my friend Antonio. He Pleasure to meet does, you, sir. He does not speak English at the moment, but hopefully soon he will. He, he just came from the continent. 
Do I see. Speak, do you speak uh, Dutch? Hmm. Sir? Actually, let's see. Oh, ciao. I said no, ciao. no, no, I'm sorry. Um, I, I speak French and, and German. Hmm. Tell him, uh, yeah, I, do not, I do not have those languages. And English, okay. of course. He's speaking to you in English. Yeah. Okay. I just tell him he, he doesn't have he doesn't know those languages. Well, no. Oh, he, well, uh, he will learn. I I did not speak much English either when I moved here, but uh, I picked it up in time. Yeah, he speaks it very well. Um, he was wanting me to ask. If we were talking about staying here for um, a little length of time. Yes. Just to see the countryside. Um, he was interested in your rooms. He has. Um, um, Yes, some clothing that's pretty nice, and he has some other doodads of his own, you know. And he wanted to make sure there was like a lock on the door. And uh, oh no, uh, there's no locks on the doors. Uh, but if you want to rent the, the the best room in the house, that that's the only one with a a door that locks. It costs five silver pieces per night. Yeah, I'll tell him. I'll tell you in Dutch. What he said. And it's only one room. Yeah. yeah, I could do that. Okay, he has a large yeah, he bed, though. Yeah. He could do that. He said he would do that for you. Very well. Yeah. And tell him that uh, we will all be staying, uh, figure about 10 days. So, well, let's just go for five days to start with. And I have the gold piece. Well, hand. Okay, so mine, it's. It's five silver a day, mm -hmm. so fifty silver for ten days. Correct. Okay, and then for ten days for them, for, for three of the other rooms, it would be sixty silver. Sixty silver. Okay, so I will say I'll have I'll give him a, I'll hand him a gold piece for mine, mm -hmm. and then I'll give him Klaus's gold piece and an additional ten silver oh. for uh, the other gentleman. To have their four rooms. Ten days, huh? You're planning to do some business in Nonspec? Nobody ever stays that long. You know, we're just looking around right now. We're not sure if we're, we're, like I said, we came from your continent. And we're, well, please we're uh, don't, don't take me the wrong way. I'm happy for the custom. Yeah. Seems like a nice place here. Oh, well, very well. Uh, right Gail, here. I will have Gail set to, uh, to the rooms. Gail, uh, you'll have to move Mar Margaret or what did I say her name was? Margaret, right? No, not Margaret. No, it was uh, Dorothy. You have to move uh, Dorothy and I into one of the other rooms. One of these uh, gentlemen will be taking our room for a while. Yes. And um, please prepare three other of the, uh, well, four of the other rooms. One for ourselves and three for their their companions. And so she does. She, you know, takes a key from him. And goes off to uh, start preparing the rooms. Okay, well, we're doing. I'm planning to tell the other people they're getting our rooms prepared. Now, Hobbs and Klaus, while they're up talking to the um, innkeeper and eventually the uh, the serving girl as well. Someone else will come in. Let me see here. Where is it here? Um, yes. I was looking for a description. So a man, a uh, young man, about 20 years old, walks in, sees the two of you sitting there. He looks directly at you, Hobbs, and uh, comes over and sits down next to you. He, um, is there anything I'm ready to say? I mean, it's, he, he's, he's kind of a, a lanky, clumsy looking fellow. Um, you know, he, he fumbles a bit with the chairs. He tries to sit down beside you, Hobbs. Um, you also notice as he smiles, he's missing several teeth. I'll look up. You have the look of a man of adventure about you. Depends on the adventure. Mm. Well, there was a group here a couple of days ago. 
they uh, headed off to the west. Said there was a valley out there that wasn't there before. That's what they claimed. They went off there to find some uh, fabled treasure or something. Haven't been back since, though. Treasure, eh? Yeah. What kind of treasure? A grand treasure. They didn't go into specifics. You tell me, friend. Why would you tell me of this and not go yourself? Huh. Surely there is me? more treasure for you. Do you know what they call me around here? I don't. You haven't even introduced yourself. Well, my name is Randy, but everybody around here just calls me Stable Boy. Those your houses, horses outside there with the wagon? Perhaps. Mm, well, if you're going to be staying in town, I'll be the one looking after them. And how, how far is this valley you speak of? Look at Gail. See her walking up those stairs? She's the prettiest girl in the whole village, isn't she? Concentrate, child. How far is the valley? I don't know. They said it wasn't far. Less than a day, maybe a couple hours. I really don't leave the village much myself. Is there anywhere we can get a map around here? And if so, can you... Here? In, in non-spec? Nah. Go figure. All right. I don't know. They said uh, they said there was going to be gold and 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 more. I don't know what that means. What what could be more than gold? Mm -hmm. That a glint in Hobbs' eye. I don't know. Anyway, you just seemed like the kind of guy that, that kind of information might be valuable to. You know, like maybe worth a bowl of soup and an ale. Indeed. I'll, pull out, I'll give him a silver. He takes it and he runs up to the bar. You hear that? Uh, Klaus? Bossard, give me a mug uh, of the good stuff. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Sounds like adventure. And some eggs. Should probably tell the rest of the group and uh, see when we can check this out. See if it uh, pans out. Indeed. I'm in need of a good adventure to add to my epic. I think I'm thinking of writing a book. I somehow don't see it ending that well. <laughs> I hope it's not a children's book. <laughs> oh, nobody has any faith in Hobbes. Seriously. <laughs> Have you not seen the grand acts I've accomplished? So they, uh, Gale will prepare your rooms. Uh, when, once you check them out, the rooms are comfy enough. Um, the the big room, the best room of the house is quite comfy because it's normally the uh, bedroom of the uh, the couple that own the inn. Um, and I'll, it does have uh, a, a good solid lock on the door. Okay. I'll uh, gesture for, I'll ask Cole to follow me and tell him to ask to bring Gail with out to the wagon. Okay. So that uh, I'll hand her the small chest. Okay. And have Hobbs help me carry the big chest up to okay. that room. Small chest has my book in it. So as soon as I hand it to her, I tell Hobbs to tell her to not open that and don't bring that out of my sight. As you say, sir. I'll translate. <laughs> Did I say Hobbs? I meant Cole. You meant Cole? Yeah. You said Hobbs. So I I'll said Hobbs. I meant Cole. <laughs> yeah, you don't want Hobbs. <laughs> right. Fair so if you, if you followed us out, sure. But uh, okay. I, I meant Cole. <laughs> oh, do you have much stuff to carry up? No, I have my, like, you know, I have, like, my saddlebags over my shoulder. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Cole and I are carrying the chest, and I'll just have her carry that small chest. Okay. That's going to be too much altogether. That's it. We'll have her walk in front of us. Ricky, yeah, you just... take us to the room. Yeah, tell her, lead us to the room. Please. Yeah, she will. So, basically, there are, let me see, 
There are 10 rooms, five normal rooms on the left side of the hall, four normal rooms on the right side of the hall, and the large room. Um, actually, no, sorry, there's nine rooms, three normal rooms on the right side, and the large room, which is like the size of two rooms. Um, and then there's a back door as well on the second floor that um, she says, be careful if you uh, if you use that door at night. Um, she says it opens onto a fairly steep portion of the hill leading up to the church. And you, know, you wouldn't be the first person to have a few drinks and stumble out there and then find yourself rolling down the hill into the road uh, if you're not careful. Thank you. I appreciate that. I don't, per I don't foresee... Well, there may be one of us that might get drunk, but I think the rest of us are pretty well New Orleans. Well, I don't know what else there is to do in non-spec, so you never know if you're going to be here for a while. Yeah, we shall see. We shall see. Maybe tomorrow we can get a good tour of the area and see what we want to do. Well, if you need anything, I, you know, I'm almost always here. No, uh, thank you. I'll check on your rooms every day, uh, you know, to, to make the beds and if, if you need. So were we getting the three rooms on the, the together? I think that or makes sense. Yeah, they rent you the whole yeah. right right side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that way, the couple they could take one of the rooms on the yeah. left side and you know not be not be right next to any of you. Okay. So, so did somebody give us the key, or does she have the key to the? Master? She has the key. Uh, she says, "Who's going to be staying in this room?" She presumes it's going to be Antonio. Yeah. Since he's the one with all the, the the boxes, so she'll hand yeah. you the key. Grazie, Bella. And she'll smile and wink. And she'll she'll saunter back off downstairs. <laughs> Excellent. Mm -hmm. That's going to be funny. Okay. So I think that's a good place to stop this one for the night. Um, Hobbs, you have your adventure seed for next week. Oh, yeah. And uh, you guys have secured lodging for the moment in non-spec while you make your plans on what you want to do here, if you want to build, etc. cetera. Um, so, oh, experience. Let's see here. Hmm. Okay, is that and that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll give everybody 1,000 experience points for awesome. the session. Cool. Uh, where's my notes page? Oh, I'll put it down after I end the recording. Thanks for watching.